Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to episode 23 of the Red Force Podcast. My name is Eric Toledo. Joining me today is Christian Toledo. It's too much. Now, Christian, I know you got that look in your face because you think this is episode 24. Yeah. But it isn't because I already changed the doc before you got in there to 23. So you can, right. you can, you can rest easy. No, I'm just, uh, I'm just in a daze. Christian... Many theories, speculation, people losing their minds this week on the chapter mm-hmm. 906. People will be coming to back to this chapter for years to come. They'll be saying, what the fuck does this fucking mean? No one knows the answer, but we might find some answers today. We might. Christian, huge episode this week. Massive. New segment. We got Zora Fairboy dropping in for a nice interview. Expect all the content. Uh, we had a good interview. The chapter wasn't out yet, unfortunately, because it was scheduling, uh, you know, via scheduling. Well, all I know is the chapter comes out Tuesday. Yeah, and indeed, the chapter that's come out Tuesday. Ladies and gentlemen, read the official. Official translation. Uh, so, yeah, we, we talked about, you know, the usual things. Zoro, Wano. As you uh, do. Theories, his love for characters. Christian, we had... Natoshi show up for the One Piece uh, anime episode. We had we we had Natoshi show up for four minutes, literally four minutes, which is insanity, unprecedented. Unless it's a movie. Yep. Longer the the Vegito sequence. It was you, good. How do you feel about that? Episode was good. How do you feel that it was longer than the Vegito? Well, Natoshi doesn't really fit in Dragon Ball, so okay, we'll leave it there. German transformation, pretty good. Beautiful, making the German look real good. Too bad they don't do anything. Yes. But, they say the date. Uh, animation problems in that episode, no doubt. As usual. Oh, no doubt. No doubt. You can't, ha- you can't have a perfect episode in the yeah. One Piece anime. It's, it's impossible to no. pull off. Apparently, they don't know how to animate mouths. Now, people on uh, Twitter were coming at me. Being like, bro, they're not supposed to be talking. They're supposed to be thinking. What a surprise. Eric getting into Twitter wars. Now, Christian, I am... A professional animator, I can tell the difference between people thinking and people trying to talk. Why do they have thinking expressions on their face? Why does one character use their mouth to portray dialogue and then one character doesn't? If you're thinking, why is your mouth open? Yes. If you if one character is thinking if one character asks a question in thought and another character responds. Are they telepathic? Perhaps. Anyway, Christian. Your thoughts on the One Piece week so far? Well, we had a big event this week. Mm-hmm. One Piece Reverie. Indeed. We were not invited. Reverie 4. Reverie 5. We are storming the castle. Yeah. We, we will be dragon. If we're trading. Yeah, and why, what is that? At the end of the year, probably? Something like that. Who knows? Who's going to host it? Probably taking. Yeah. That's not an official announcement. That's me speculating. speculating. Christian, good Reverie good. this year. It was good. It's, I think it's the best reverie yet. Interesting conversation. Braga did an excellent job hosting. Yep. Keep, let, keeping let, it, keeping let it people talk, calm. but also yeah. let people uh, explore. Debate. Yep. And they controlled the conversation uh, quite nicely. Very nice. Reverie was good. Uh, interesting debate, interesting theories, interesting thoughts. Dominated. By talking about this goddamn hat. Yes. Don't and we'll get into it, Christian. I'll we'll definitely get into Christian, it. Christian, anything else before we get in to the chapter? No, you know, just, you know, forums exploding, everyone's exploding. You know, just that's how it is when, uh, you know, Oro drops that theory bait. I love some theory bait. Oh, it's definitely theory bait. There's no doubt that's, that it's theory bait. Now, Christian, chapter. Chapter 906, Sacred Mary Joa. Yep. Not Mary Goa. Mary Joyce. Yep. Alright. Official translation. Cleared it all up. Now, the Japanese original print, you know, the Japanese, right? They don't know how to pronounce French words. Yes. Mary Joa, clearly French. It's pronounced Mary Joa. Okay. One Piece Wiki, change it back. 
Yeah. You're too quick to pull the trigger at One Piece Wiki. Indeed. You're too quick. Remember the One Piece Wiki saying that Hydruden, not Hydruden's yeah. crew had Dorian Brogy on it? The One Piece Wiki is too quick to pull the trigger. Too quick Change indeed. Alright. Give us a good description. First of all, shout out to the uh, assistants yes. of Oda. Tremendous, tremendous background art this week. They're fucking killing it. Yeah. Great art. Fantastic art. You know, nice big shots, heaps of detail, crazy stuff. Alright. So, after that, first the fishmen arrive, the fish, the crew, the, the kingdom crews, yeah. arrive at the top of the red line with some very interesting, massive statues. Yes. Of people that all seem different. They're not copies. No. They all have different expressions, different weapons, different poses. 50, the, the kingdoms, Christian. The kings of the kingdoms. Maybe. The original kingdoms. Maybe. 19 or... In, there's a debate whether it was 20 kingdoms or 19 kingdoms. Yeah. Because of the Don Quixote family and did they get erased from history. But... Okay. There's an, inter- there's an interesting debate there that yep. it was either 19 or 20. But you can see 10 statues in Dock 2. Yeah. Yeah. 10 statues in Dock 2. Assuming there's another 10 in Dock 1. Well, on Dock, you can see Dock 4 in one of the panels. Yeah. And you see that it's a different statue compared to Dock 2. Yeah. So that's, assumably, 20 different statues. Okay. So on Dock 1 and Dock 3, there would have to be twenty another 20 unique statues. Now, is this the Age of Kingdoms? Is this, are, they, are, they are they heroes of the Celestial Dragons? That's what I'm saying. You know? So these, this architecture, these, these statues, very good environmental world building. Also, Oda answered the question this week, mechanically, of how Luffy and the crew are going to store Mary Joa. I mean, you answered that last week. Yes, but you know? more details. You don't go straight up. You gotta climb these You stairs. don't go straight up to the castle, Christian. You gotta get through. There's of course, huge, vast, course. open fields. We'll, we'll get to that. We'll get, we're not done. Yes. So, you can see all the donkey base, different statues. Okay. They're all cloaked with weapons. Yes. Which suggests to me that they're warriors. Why would kings have weapons? Reminds me hmm? of church figures. Yes. You go to a church in cloaks that have swords, you know, stabbing snakes, the devil. Yeah. Shit like that. Starves. Reminds me of All that. that kind of stuff. Very, uh... Yeah, holy vibe. Very Vatican-like. From, yes. Yeah. So I'm going to suggest that these were great warriors in the battle against the Age of Kingdom. Okay. That's what I'm going to suggest. They're like the guardians that guard, you know, Mary Joa in spirit. Yep. Alright. So after that little aside, you can also see little black dots on the staircases. Suggesting that these are, uh, you know, guards. Yeah. People going this place. Okay. Very good attention to detail. Mm-hmm. On display. That just add details to the world. Yes. This is what is so great about One Piece. Those massive shots. Indeed. No one, no one else wants to do these. Uh... It's, no one else to do it. it's very traditional, Christian, in yeah. in the manga, the in manga history. The establishing uh, shot. It can be called an establishing shot, but it's more of a uh, tone piece mm. that only dictates and only is used to set the scene. Yeah. Uh, very traditional in uh, manga, going all the way back to uh, the original works with at panel structure at all. Yeah. Uh, going all the way back to early 1900s, uh, evolving through Asher Boy coming through uh, to the modern era, sort of pre Dragon Ball, post Dragon Ball. I'm not seeing it in the of, modern era. Hmm? I'm not seeing it in the modern era. Yeah, and the modern era is kind of dropping lessons learned from history, which we um, we might do a separate video about that. I'm interested in mechanically, but here's the thing. There we go. Background art. Takes such a fucking long yeah, time. Definitely. And maybe Oda gets all the assistants. You know, he's a top selling guy. Yeah, he's probably got like. He's probably got like ten assistants. What's the count? Don't we know? It's like six or something. 
I think it's like six or eight. Yeah. He's got a lot of assistants to do all the background. And now. of course, he started as an assistant on um, Kenshin. Kenshin. So the top selling guys get the, you know, they get them. Yeah. Otherwise, the artists have to draw massive backgrounds themselves. They don't have the time to do that. Indeed. You know, they've got a week to put out a chapter. Or oh, doesn't have time to draw the sheen of Mojo. And the. What, what would you call it? Architectural. It's French. Is it easily French? High French. Yeah, French. It's French architecture. Yeah, Baroque, Easy. maybe. It's not as complex as Baroque, but... No, it's it's like pre-revolution yeah. architecture. French architecture. Easy. Alright, so a little interesting details from the narrator. Mm-hmm. This is the place where the descendants of the creator creators of the world dwell. Yeah. Does this not confirm the Celestial Dragons created the One Piece world? Uh... It could be... It could be... It's from the narrator. It's from the narrator, but it could also suggest the holy themes that the Celestial Dragons... Wait, did they, are, have, they have said that before? ...are yeah. considered to be the gods of the world. Yep. So that could also be symbolic of... You know, that, that kind of thing. That kind of theme. Is it more of a... They created the world as in a world... One world government? Yeah. Are you talking about terraforming and shit like that? Is that what you're trying to... I'm either saying it refers to terraforming yeah. or them coming together to create the to one create world government the, yeah, the, the and world. that's how the world works. And, so that and, does yeah, they create and, the world. And themes of their holy yeah. god-like status. Alright. Yeah. Alright. Shocking turn of events. Mary Joa is fucking huge. Yes. It is a huge kingdom. Country. We assumed it was... I assumed it was... I don't know. From, from, what, from what we saw before, yeah. we only saw the main palace structure yeah. that where the Gorosei are. It covered in clouds. There we see it all. Now we see the splendor. whole the city. And this this get, this shot alone yeah. brings up interesting thoughts about hierarchical structures yes. of the Celestial Dragons themselves. A thousand years of nineteen families mating. Yes. There must there must be Heads like King Celestial Dragon. Yeah, King of Kings. Head head of the Celestial Dragon family. Yeah. So you got King One the, the Patriarchy. And you've got the, the, you got the family, the family tree yeah. and like the cousins and the uncles and all that shit. Similar to ruling bloodlines where yeah. like the king of those of those. So you would have families. higher celestial dragons and others, you know, yep. all that political stuff going on. And I imagine a King of Kings at the top. But we'll get into that. I mean Okay, it's interesting. So, would you assume that slaves run businesses and amenities, slaves, services? Slaves probably run almost everything in this nation. Joint. Yeah. So construction, construction, shops, maintenance, sewage. I doubt there's even shops. There's probably just them delivered the food directly. Maybe there's markets and things. So but it's I all residential. It. Yeah, it's probably all residential with, with slaves running running the place, pretty much. I mean... Well, not right, doing all these services and celestial dragons... Just living. Just doing nothing. Okay. Why the fuck is this palace so big? Mm. We get to see it in all of its glory. One window is one one window yeah. is taller than the tallest building within the city. Crazy. That's how fucking big this place is. Why have a massive castle? Who lives in there? Government officials such as the Gorosei. Gorosei. And probably the King of Kings Palace. Why is it so why does he need these many rooms? Who lives there? Christian is the palace. Why the ceilings are massive. Yeah. Giant connection. What do you think about that? You think there's giant celestial dragons? I think there are. I think goes back to the moon people. Maybe they were massive people. Ties into the straw hat shit. We can talk about it later. Okay. The original celestial dragons. My my the original yeah. moon people were massive. Okay. Were bigger than the were bigger than humans. Yeah. That's why the castle ceilings are tall as fuck. That's why the castle is huge. Assuming it's the to original acco- palace. To accommodate these massive people. Okay. That's just a, that's just an architectural theory. 
and based on a picture. Yeah. No well, evidence there. Okay. No no textual we'll, evidence. We'll leave that there for for now. Alright, clearly based on a chateau called Chateau de Chambord. Yep. Found in France. Yep. Exactly. Ex- almost an exact replica okay. of what this thing looks like. Any historical relevance that you, that you looked into? Not, not really, just uh, you know, a lord lived there in the countryside. Okay. No, no, it's, it just looks like it. It's clearly some influence there. Yep. So clearly that French influence, you know, continues there. Okay. You know? So, interesting details. Mm-hmm. The castle is heavily fortified. Indeed. It's got a wall around it. Yep. It's got cannons. It's got weaponry. Mm-hmm. Why? The celestial dragons are clearly think they might get attacked. Yes. Because they have erected these structures for defense. Yeah. What is that? What do you reckon that's about? Do they I'm, know that there's a there's a prophecy out there that someone will, might come and defeat them? Because they're, they're ready for a fight. They've got these emplacements. Well, they have they have the navy. That's right true. next to them on either sides. They are heavily fortified. And like any ruling class, heavily guarded. Heavily... Heavily fortified. Heavily what? fortified, sure. Cushion, it just makes logical sense that they'd be at fortifications, just in case. But the arrogance of the celestial dragons, they're the kings, they will ne- always be the kings. Yes, but... Who would challenge their rule? I'd imagine that the, the celestial dragons that we've seen in the story yeah. are, the, are the pleb celestial dragons. Because we see the Gorosei are switched on. Yeah. They know what the fuck's up, and they're trying to rule the world. But are the Gorosei celestial dragons? They're in Marajar, they might not be. This is the thing. I imagine there's an elite class of celestial dragons. Sure. That actually know what's happening. Yeah. See, because you have to assume that these... The the society of celestial dragons, right? Yeah. Outside the ruling class that we assume exists, are oblivious to any history, oblivious to any conditions outside yeah. of... Of Marajoa, oblivious to any kind of threat or pirates, etc., etc. Alright, and guess what? We got all this information out of one picture. Yeah. That is the power of having a de- heavily detailed establishing shot. Establishing shot. Also, high altitude. We'll get into that. Very right? good breathing from the Celestial Dragon. Is that why they need to wear the bubbles? Yes, because they're acclimatized to high altitude. Yes. Also, they don't want to breathe the same air as humans. Uh, okay. Alright, so, you know. Also a connection to the moon, men. The forest is man-made. Yeah. Of course. Because it's high altitude. You can't grow shit at high altitude. Yeah. Shit doesn't grow naturally at high altitudes. Of course it's man-made. Alright. Does this imply that the entire red line is barren? Yes. Okay. It does. Who... I don't think you understand how... Big the fucking red line. The is. red line is absolutely massive. It goes the entire way around the world. Equator. Yeah. Right. Not the equator. Not the equator. The, the opposite of the equator. The other f- way. Vertical equator. There's a word for it. I Equinox is that what it's called? No. Something like that. I don't know what it's called. Okay. But effectively the equator. Yeah. So. Why. Make an entire ring around the planet when you're only going to live in one spot. Must be bad. Must be. There's no... Unless... Unless there's like... We get we to... We go up to the red line. We go up to the red line and we have to deal with like the military on the red line and the, shit. We go up to the red line, one PZ, yeah. dealing with the military. On top of the red line. Turns out there's crazy people on top. Turns out there's... It's the, the dark emperor, continent. The emperors of the, of the red line. Yeah. Shit like that. Maybe. I don't know. Who knows? Probably not. Yeah. But this is a completely unexplored territory. Yes. Alright. They have canes ready for the fishermen. Does this not imply some sort of respect for the fishermen? They knew that they were coming. They knew they were coming, so they have the respect enough to to they, prepare for their I'm, entrance. I'm unclear as to how the world government yeah. and the Slushy Dragon now view the royalty of the, of the fishmen. Of the fishmen. Because they're supposed to be slaves, right? But every race can be slaves. No, but according to the world government, slaves don't exist. We don't know shit about yeah. that. Okay. What are you talking about? It's, so, it, 
They're just they're discriminated have, against class. Yeah, but you could say. but have the because they're not a part of a government, correct or not correct? They are. But they they're trying to. They've been part of the world government for two hundred years. Yes, but why have like under the flag of white beard and shit? Like, what's that about? Are they allowed to do that? Like, because of the because of their position. Yeah. And the navy can't send shit down there. Okay. It's because of their position. Because they're the gate to the new world. So they're asking for an island on top of the sea. They're asking for a place land on top of the on top of the sea. This is, like, see, other kingdoms like Stellion shit are retarded, and they're like. These, these fishmen, these fishmen are, are stupid, yeah. yeah. So, I don't know what's going on with the Celestial Dragons, but... Anyway, there's some sort of respect from at least the high-ups. Yeah. That, alright, these these fishmen are coming, let's get prepared for them. Let's get them some equipment so they can move around. Okay. Alright. So, Fukuboshi feels bad about the Travelator. Big reveal, it runs on slaves. What? D- Extremely inefficient technology. Grisha, they have bubble technology to have massive Why not? Lifts. Why not? Just run it off steam. Let's just talk about this mechanical engine for a second. For it to work logically, they'd have to walk the entire distance. And then walk back. Turn around, reset it, and then start again. Yeah. What's going on Or, here? or, you do this. Yeah. You have a steam engine that runs it for you. You could have a cola engine that runs it for a you. Co- some sort of engine that runs this thing for you yep. and have slaves shovel coal into it. More effective, more efficient. Maybe they just enjoy them doing hard physical labor. They have to feed these people. It costs them money to keep them alive. Should we talked about this last week. They have infinite funds. I'm just, you know, it's just inefficient. Okay. And it annoys me. It makes me hate the celestial dragons more for the inefficiency. inefficiency. Okay. You know, you know, I was doing a good job there. Not only do they have slaves, but they're using their slaves the, the, the slave driver kind of looks like the guy from the auction house. Isn't it interesting? They kind of have like the same get up. Uh, do you think all slave drivers in One Piece look the same? No. Okay. Just a little coincidence there, maybe. Alright. So Fukubushi feels bad about that. You know, they don't they don't walk on it. Because so they're, you know, they're the good guys, you know. Um, so... I think this is clear evidence that the revolutionary is going to free the slaves at the river. Yeah, we're seeing the slaves. We're seeing the slave angle. Underground as well, for Molly. I think the rev, the Rev's big act is going to be freeing the slaves. Okay. Alright. Now, massive thing no one's talking about. Go on. Charles, we see him again. Yes. And he spots Shirohoshi. And he wants to fish. He wants that action. What is the plan for Shirohoshi? Will she reject him, right? Causing a war or ruining the chances of the fishmen to come to the surface? Or, option B, or there will be a political marriage between the two, allowing the fishmen to come to the surface. Luffy gets wind of this and attacks Mary Dora to save Shirohoshi from Charles after Wano. How important is Charles in the grand scheme of things? He's a celestial dragon. He's better than all the kings there. Okay. He has some sort of weight. His father has some sort of weight. We'll see how that plays out. It Will it play out as just a gag or more importantly later on? I think it's hints for the ending of the reverie. Okay. It might be a cliffhanger. What does Shirohoshi do? Cliffhanger, you don't find out. Yeah. After one oh, massive news, Fishman freed uh, Shirohoshi and Charles, Charles married. Okay. Luffy, not happy about this. He knows Shirohoshi, he knows Charles, he knows what he's about, goes up to Marajoa. This is the reason for Luffy to go to Marajoa. Or the new island constructed. But that will take time to construct that place. What do you think about that? Christian, let's not get into grand scale endgame shit where Luffy goes into the Marajo, all right? But could because this be a hint? There's multiple angles. Do I think the well, war ending trigger will be saving Shirohoshi from Charles? No, I don't. Could it be a possibility? It's a possibility, you know, yeah. But do I think that such an important event will be triggered so soon? Will this trigger Fishman Island to stay. 
Underwater. I think it's gonna be a thing where like Fukuboshi beats the shit out of like or Neptune beats the shit mm. out of Charles and they get kicked out of the world government. I think it's gonna be like, what do we do here? Because it, my my theory is right yeah. that the Allied kingdoms under that like Luffy mm. will leave the world government. Perhaps because they're all friends with Shirohoshi now. Perhaps after this incident, and declare Luffy as their ruler. What if Shirohoshi slaps Charles? Yeah. And she's gonna be executed. Does Luffy come in then? Does the audience care enough about Shirohoshi? Ancient went. Oda's were trying real hard. Yeah. Oda's trying real hard to make the audience care. This could trigger is, Luffy. Is Shirohoshi to come the ace of the new Marine Fort arc? Will it be even take place in Marineford? New Marineford. Where do you execute people? Could be in Marijoa. Could be in Shibondi to I show don't think, people. I don't think it's a big deal executing the princess compared to executing the It's a big deal to Luffy. Of, yeah, but like, to the world government, is it a big deal televising the execution? But it'll, of, be, it'll be a message to the people that you can't mess with the Lords of Dragons. Because all the kings are there. Luffy beat the shit out of Charlos. Okay. And not much really happened to him. I mean, Kizaru appeared and yeah. kicked the shit out of everyone. Kizaru appeared. It wasn't for Kuma. There's still... It wasn't for Kuma, they'd all be dead. There's still no legitimate hunt for Luffy, though, from an all-out force of the Navy. You know what I'm saying? It's because they thought he was dead. Okay. Interesting to think about, ladies and gentlemen. What is the... Little hint Charlos Shirohoshi angle. Also, Charlos in the pleb districts of the, of the Celestial Dragon. You can't say that. So there you go. Think about it. We'll see what happens. I think there's a possible political thing there. Okay. So, that's massive. Alright. Interesting little, uh, interesting little, uh, tidbit here. Yeah. The castle is called Pangaea. Okay. Pangaea, for anyone who doesn't know, is the supercontinent from the Earth's past. Yeah. All... All continents fit continents together. Continents fit together, create Pangaea. Mm-hmm. Could this be a reference to the 19 kings to come together to create the world government? Or more terraforming shit? Hints, 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 Christian. They're, they're placed there for a reason. Yep. And we'll know the reason when it happens. Comments on this thing I'm about to say. Yep. The reverie arc is just theory bait. 100%. Christian, when, before this arc started, I said, we're not going to get any answers. And we have gotten no answers... And more questions. Any more hints? Yes. Maybe. Maybe. We're three chapters deep. Then heaps Assuming another ten or so to go. Massive bombshell this week, for sure. Yep. Alright. People, you know, people interacting, you know, maybe a little bit of foreshadowing with, you know, Sh- Shirohoshi rejecting, rejecting the princess. Rejecting the princess, probably going to happen to Charles. Probably going to happen to Charles. What happens there is going to be interesting. Yep. Vivi and Rebecca, in, you know, interactions... We get some, you know, get some interaction there. You know, Luffy, oh, Luffy's cool. Mm-hmm. You know, the uh, you know the Luffy gang coming together in the reverie. Are you annoyed that in this chapter, yeah. there are, I'm going to say 10% of panel time. 10%. There are four panels. 10% of panel time is like, do you remember, do you remember Drum Island? Well, that's for the plebs, man. Yeah. What do you want? You know? I just find I... it interesting. Has this happened before? Where it's like, no. dude... <laughs> Our mate, technique. our mate, didn't know what happened in Drum Island. Yeah, Cobra Hairs. Cobra Hairs did not know what happened in Drum Island. This is for didn't these plebs. Didn't know who Dalton was. These are for these plebs, alright? Okay. It's for the plebs, man. How many people read One Piece and what percentage of those are hardcore? Like 1%? Okay. Maybe. Yeah. So, I think it's necessary for the overall audience. Okay. There's a waste power time. Yes. Well, we're uh, jam-packing shit know. in this, these chapters, man. We're going fast. Conversations that would have taken three chapters usually happen in f- four pages. See, this is why the Reverie arc has been fantastic so far. We're going, we're going quick. Has this been one dud chapter of the Reverie? No. No. Alright. So, you know, that shit goes on. What would be an idiot, uh, you know, saying that you have to rule country with an iron fist. Mm-hmm. You know, a kind of Whipple's mentality. He's just, you know, bagging everyone, being a smart ass. He's being Whipple, you know... Dalton tells us to fuck off. Yep. All that kind of things. Now, 
we go into the more interesting parts. Mingo hey, hang time, on. baby. Sai so will leave his country after this is uh, over. Yeah, we already knew that. Okay. Just putting it out there. So we, yeah, that's that's important information. All right. Mingo time, baby. Yeah. We wanted this. We got it. Praise we were God. saying Mingo's going to turn up. He turned up. He's talking to Magellan, but is he actually there? Yes. He's guarding him. Interesting. He says, why am I here in the... Solitary confinement. Solitary confinement. Are you protecting me, Magellan? Is he talking to Magellan, or is he just talking to himself? Isn't he talking about it's lonely down here? Why are you here? No, he never says that. Okay. So, is he talking to Magellan, or is he talking to himself? Is Magellan there, or is he not there? Well, he's having a speech about power to someone. I imagine he's talking to Magellan. Yes. Is Magellan locked up? Magellan's not locked up, he's just demoted. Yeah, but maybe uh, he's uh, done the Shiryu thing. Also... Maybe he's on the shoe. He'd have to have a toilet nearby. He's always on the bog, man. So he's going to have to have a toilet near Mingo, which is probably torture enough for Mingo. Mingo really doesn't care that he's locked up, by the way. He doesn't give a fuck. He's having a good time. Just waiting for the Celestial Dragons to burn. Mingo has, like, the best speeches in the entire One Piece series. Oh, he's, got, he's getting free. He's going to be in that final war laughing. Interesting, right? No. Yep. Why is Magellan protecting Dofi? Is it because the world government... Have respect for the justice system. CP0 versus the Marines. I think this is the situation. Deep State, would you say? Deep State versus the Marines. Because we see this struggle constantly go on. The Marines have their own idea of what they want to do. Yeah. And the CP0 come over the top of that and fuck shit up. Yeah. So I think it's the Marines and the World Government versus the CP in this situation. So the Marines have respect for the system. Yeah. They're not going to let... Justice due process, etc., etc. Et yeah. But like it's kangaroo court, and when they're gonna well, execute Mingo's him. sentence is to rot in jail, assumedly. Yeah. So they would respect the justice system. Yeah. Okay. All right. Crazy theory time. Do you wanna do you wanna say the speech or write down nope. the speech or not? Nope. Uh, yeah, I did. But crazy theory time. So I know. Okay. Who Pika and Senior Pink would have an easy time climbing the red line, would they not? They would. Both have stone manipulation fruits. Yep. Both have, you know, the ability to, to get to, up to the red line pretty easily. Okay. Are they going to deliver Mingo's news to the king and shock the world? Does Mingo want this information to get out at all costs? My, my thing is, I'm pr- I think Mingo's going to escape. And tell everyone. And tell everyone in the reverie. But could it be possible that his he's crew does it for him? Is that, his, continu- is that his who contingency Who gives a fuck plan? about his crew? He can do it. But is that his contingency Yeah, plan? I know travel time, but he can fly, so it's all right. That's and this, this interesting detail, seven-day conference. That you seven days? Seven days to get there? Yep. That's interesting, because we were asking how long the mm-hmm. conference was. Seven-day confirmation. So, what I'm asking is, does Mingo have a contingency plan if he gets captured and to release? If the, wor- if the Celestial Dragons don't play ball... And he gets captured. Does he have a contingency plan to release his information? Probably. Probably. And who would that be? Who knows? Alright. Now, for the speech. To select the secret out. Power has such a short shelf life. It goes bad very quickly. Mm -hmm. What is he talking about? So, specifically about the Celestial Dragons and their their grip on the world. On the society and the world. And he's referring to his own... Power that was Situation. taken away from him. Exactly. Now, Christian. People out there want to say ooh, ooh. that it relates to something later on. We'll get to. And now, we hit the crazy part of the chapter. Ridiculous. That blindsided everyone. No one could predict this. Just, just drop it in, no context, nothing. And here we go. Mm-hmm. The place is in Merajoa. There is a figure... Walking down a dark room. You can tell he's walking down because of the stab, the way that the statues are positioned. Yes. Up. You can see their heads and all that shit. Mm-hmm. So he's not walking up, he's walking down. Yes. Important, because people are confused about that. He's walking down. He has, well, it has two wanted posters. One is Luffy's. One's a fucking question mark. Question mark. There is so much theory bait here. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Right? 
unlock the vault into a cold area. Mm-hmm. Ruined cold area. A ruined cold area. Walks up to a wall with, we can see, seven altars. Yep. One is lit up, and there is a giant straw hat with frost on it. Clearly theory bait. And we're going to go into deep. Next segment. Now, Christian, before we go into the next segment, we've got to do our usual things. Exactly. Chapter rating, next chapter, talk to me. Here's the thing. People want to give this chapter a 10 out of 10. Right? For the last page. For the last page alone. Two last pages. But, you got to be fair. you got to be fair. Opening, extremely interesting. Yep. Heaps of little details there. Fantastic art. Last page, theory bait. Opens up massive talks between community stuff. Yep. Which is which is definitely a bonus. I think this is I think this chapter revitalized People making that YouTube money over all over the place. This chapter revitalized One Piece. Yeah. It was kind of a little bit of a slump. Uh, you know, because... I don't know if it was on a slump, it was uh, more like, you know what, what I, are we doing? You know what I mean by like yeah. people the forgot, theory juice people, was starting to, to, to People to forgot that magic. Yeah. Because the whole cake aren't. Okay. Because they didn't think it was hype. They didn't think it had what it took. It didn't, I did. It, but people out there didn't. Whole cake aren't didn't build the world there specifically. This is... It this did. Is, it had some elements there. But, but this is what we're doing. This is massive bombshells that will revitalize the series. Yes. To its to I a think, high amount. And I think people were expecting this kind of information or slash bombshells from the underworld figures. Yeah. That we kind of got from Stussy, but not really. And yeah. big news, fan favorite. Fan very big news. But I think people were expecting information like this from, from Here's the, the underworld thing. figures. Here's the thing, right? This is, this is what this chapter is going to do. Yeah. Let's just say you have a mate. Uh, he dropped one piece in Hawkeye Gone because he got a little bored with it. Yeah. You go up to him and say, hey... Uh, this is crazy chapter just dropped. Uh, there's a mysterious giant straw hat, and it could lead to all these crazy things. Yeah, they're checking that shit out. They're back in. They're back in. This is what this chapter did. It helps to grow the community. Who are these people that drop one piece mid arc? People who have no patience. No. People who just want to see explosions. Now, Christian, give me a rating. Now I'm still going through it. All right. right. Middle of the chapter. Did I need it? Mm-hmm. All right. Heaps of recap. The Luffy harem grows. Did I need that? Yeah, but not really. I okay. knew it had to come. Was it entertaining? Would I like to see Boa? Well, I think we will make this interesting and, and funny. Is have Boa there freaking out that all these girls are interested in Luffy? Why aren't the warlords there? Maybe they are already. We don't know. Maybe they'll arrive next chapter. Okay. So. Yeah, 9 out of 10, just because the middle wasn't that great, but the start and the end, fantastic. Christian, me, yep. rating. The more I think about the last chapter, last page, mm. the more I start to get angry. <laughs> I know you hate theory bait. This is, this is theory bait that will cause mass retardation in the community. Mm-hmm. Now, is that Otis Falls specifically? Maybe. Maybe. Alright. Do I enjoy things that are so vague and have no connection to anything that... Oh, there's connections. Do I, have, do I enjoy things that you, can, you can't... You can't so vague that you can't, you can't really give any solid theory on? Yeah. Maybe a solid... You know what I'm saying. Yeah. Yes, no. We'll get into my my issues with this in the next segment. Possible issues with this. Yeah, there are some. And I enjoyed the rich detail that we got of Mary Jo of this chapter. The Reverie arc is just so good for world building. Yes. It's ridiculous. For me? This is how you do it. Look, I pretty much have the same problems you do. Maybe I don't like the last chap the last page. Specifically, as much as other people do, I still enjoy it. It's very enjoy, very it, shocking. Very it enjoyable. annoys me a little bit. It does, yeah, I can get that. So I'm gonna say eight and a half. Eight and a half. All right, Cushion. Into the new segment, the debut segment. The murky waters. <laughs> the 
the murky waters. Here we are. Now, what is this segment? Christian, this is a segment dreamt up by yourself. Dreamt up by myself. It is a segment where no, we speculate. Now, no real reason to have this here. We could have done this in the last minute, but Christian wants the bit. But, you know... This, this, will, is, this, 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 is, will, this segment is for massive speculation. This, this so segment... I want to separate it from the chapter discussion. This segment yeah. is for... The deep state law that will happen the occasionally. Deep, the deep, the deep, delving into speculation, into the unknown murky waters, as it were. Okay. The Here grand, the grand theory, as you. The were. grand theories, murky waters. Christian, what are we talking about? We're talking about what the fuck is up with this hat. Okay. Here are the facts we know. Viz official translation. Here are the facts. Yes. Takes place within the castle Pangea. Yes. Fact. Person walks downstairs into a vault. Fact. It's cold. That's a fact. It's ruined. It's a massive room with seven altars we can see. Fact. Mm-hmm. Person has two wanted posters. And there is a giant straw hat that is lit up. Yep. Those are the facts. Okay. 100% facts. That's all we have yep. to work with here. Alright. Mingo just stopped talking about the national treasure. So people out there are going to assume that this is what the national treasure is. Or related to it. Complete assumption. Yes. Complete assumption. Fair assumption. It's a fair assumption, but an assumption nonetheless. Designed for you to assume so. Designed for you to assume so. It could be a troll that has to be taken into account. Yep. Is this a national treasure? You can't say that it is 100%. Yep. That's why that's not a fact. Yep. It's an assumption. Okay. Alright? You can't assume that. There is also no context. Mm-hmm. Why, what, who, or how? Okay. No context. Alright. The first massive question I have. Who is this person? Now. Man or woman? Doesn't really matter. Show the images? You can't be fucked. Christian and I... Uh, and I think it's important. ...differ on the figure. The so figure? I'll throw those throw up there. Throw that now. up there. So do you, you, can, do you want to talk about it? So A or B, I did A, Christian did B. I think it's a dude with a must, Old man with a moustache, real lanky. Christian thinks it's a what? Some sort of queen woman. Okay. With Could a, be a dude with long hair. With like a bob haircut, kind yeah. of. Okay. I mean, the Celestial Dragons have weird haircuts. Yeah. It's a possibility. So... The question about what this fuckhead looks like is out there. Silhouetted, so you can't get jack shit out of that, right? And I'll add that Otis silhouettes aren't really accurate some of the time. That's true. I studied this with the green ball that happened this, last week. But uh, In he, previous sessions. Here's the thing, you don't Incon- notice it? He's, inconsistent. Here's the thing, you don't notice it, but Oda, not that consistent with his characters. Yeah, I'm aware. You don't notice it, but it's it's there. If you analyse it a lot, you yeah. notice that he's not very consistent. Especially at distances and shit. Yes. So, a little bit of leeway there. Who is this? What is this? We don't know. But, speculation. This person wears a crown. A ridiculous crown. A ridiculous crown. Almost reminds me of a Dark Souls X crown. Yeah. It's massive, huge. sparky, huge. Long. Long. Alright. What does that imply? Christian. What does that imply? I think... Some sort of ruler? This figure. Yeah. King of Kings. King of Kings, the ruler secret ruler. of the Holy Land. The secret ruler of the social dragon. The orchestrator of the entire world. So we're talking about some conspiracy shit. Yeah. The true ruler of the world. Yes. The celestial dragons are just a show. Yeah. You've got this king who rules everything. No one knows about him. He pulls all the strings. Yeah. He is the true antagonist. Okay. Possibility. Alright? Why? Alright. Could this be a revolutionary member in disguise I to mean, steal the treasure? Could I that bought, be a possibility? I bought this up. It's possible. The crown throws me off, but Ivankov has a crown. Okay? Yeah, it could so, it be a disguise? Design, disguise, etc. Could this be a possibility? Could be. Could be. Can we all can we agree that this is a new character? 
is either a new character or someone in a very good disguise. Yeah. People throwing out Vegapunk. Don't know about the crown. Timeline issues. Yeah. Said he's not there. He's got... Maybe he's got rubber gloves on. Maybe. Maybe. Could yeah. be just royal gloves. Okay. And it's cold. So, you, you know, you got to turn, turn shit. Interesting. We don't know who this person is, but there are clues there. Really long... Okay. Dress. Train thing. on the on the cloak uh, or whatever. Yeah. Interesting. So... Who is this person? No idea, but there are a few key things here. Second question. Why keep this place cold? To it's, preserve it's, something, it's right? It's either to preserve whatever it is, or it's like the environment down there for some reason. But we see the door sealed, probably to preserve the situation. It's under lock and key. Yeah. So why don't they want people to know about this thing? Okay. It's under lock and key... So we know that they don't want people to know about this. Yep. More evidence that it's a national treasure. Okay. Because it's under lock and key. It's in some sort of secret place within the castle. You know. Definitely. That kind of thing. Are they storing it? Why are they storing it? Has it some importance? Why not just destroy this item? Okay. If this item has the power... To destroy, to give, to give ruling power. Mm-hmm. Why keep it? Why not just destroy it? Interesting. Is it destructible? Can you kill it? Is it a relic? But a vi- a trophy, a victory trophy. But why keep it hidden? Mm. If it's a trophy, why keep it hidden? Okay. There are a lot of questions that can destroy theories, can make me question theories. Yep. That people want to ignore, people don't want to bring up. Okay. If it's a trophy, why have it under lock and key? Why not display it to the world mm. that we won the Void Century War? We have this trophy of this of this person. Yeah. Why not do that? Alright. Why is one thing lit up? It could be a composition choice. But it's not that noticeable in the composition. It could be a composition choice. It could be. It's really not that noticeable. Yeah. Could that's a possibility. It's a possibility? Or it's lit up in some way for some kind of like... Mystical yeah, reason. He's Monkey D, or Straw Hat, has whatever. Okay, those are the questions we need to keep in mind. Yep. All these things have to add up to get a logical theory yep. together. Alright, first theory out there. The hat has literal power and gives the user some sort of great power. Okay. Alright. This mainly stems from what Mingo was talking about with the national treasure. Yeah. And I'm going to quote him. If I had the power of the Opi Opi fruit that day, I would have been able to use the power of the tr- national treasure to control the world itself. Mm. What does this mean? Let's break it down. Is this political power? I have the immortality surgery, so I can't be killed... And I have the ace on my sleeve. Yeah. So I can control people with that mystery. Yeah. So I can control Possible. the world government yeah. with this ace on my sleeve. They can't kill me. They have to work with me. They have to let me rule. Okay. Because I'm indestructible and I have what it takes to destroy them. I don't know the secret. I don't know the secret and I can destroy it with them. Yeah. This also means... He also says the very existence of this natural treasure would shake the world... To its knees. Mm. So it has to, it has to have some sort of historical relevance. relevance. Yeah. It can't just be a item of power. What would that mean to the average person? And in One Piece? also, I, w- I want to talk about mechanically how like the power system works works in One Piece. Yeah, there's no real like magic items other than the devil fruits. Yeah, it could. They, this could be a hat that was infused with the devil fruit. Yes, very or ancient history it, things. To to yeah, if this is a, here's the thing. Here's the also, problem. no one can wear this hat unless you're a big person. It's a massive hat. Yes. So how would Mingo wear this? He would look really retarded in okay. it. Okay. Would it be some sort of cape? Mm. Who knows? It's not that big. It's pretty fucking. It's big. big. We wouldn't be able to wear it. It'd be like a bloody. Put it on his back, I guess. It'd be like a yeah. turtle shell or something. Weird. Yeah. So, the thing that doesn't 
buy me over to this theory is why don't the celestial dragons destroy this item if it's an item that can grant massive power okay and give the person who wears it some sort of ultimate power of destiny yeah why do that unless it's indestructible indestructible it has to have some sort of mystery to it to shake the world to its knees. Yeah. Can't it be just a power item? Okay. There are a few options, right? Mingo was talking about the immortality, so we can't be killed, power, all that thing. Or, Mingo is talking about you need to be immortal to use the hat because the hat drains you of your, youth, of your life force. Right. Because it, it has so much power, that kind of thing. Okay. Could be related to that. But then again, all those things I brought up. Option two. You know, he needs he needs that, right? Mm-hmm. The hat is the relic of the past, reminds the celestial dragons of the true history. That's another option. There is more than one chamber, so there could be more than one relic. Yes. That also is a counter argument. To a being, the straw hat has mystical powers that can destroy the world. Okay. Because there are more, there are more relics in this chamber. Yep. There's not just one thing in there. There's multiple things in there. Right? So is this a relic of the past mm. to remind the celestial dragons of what happened in the void century? Right? Is this person going down there to check something against Luffy's wanted poster? Yes. He has the poster. He's going down there to check something. Okay. Is the hat still there? Is the hat still there? Is this... Is this the same hat? Yeah. Is this some sort of reincarnation of the guy who used to wear this hat? Yeah. The inherited will that's always brought up in One Piece? All that kind of thing. Okay. Right. This is why the hat is frozen. To keep it from rotting. Yes. It's in stasis. It's being preserved. Could this be that? If this is the answer, I think the other poster is Rogers. Okay. The two people that changed the world. Yeah. That or Luffy will change the world, but Roger changed the world with being Pirate King. Okay. Alright. But how would this revelation shock the world? Mm. That's the thing you gotta ask yourself. How would this straw hat shock the world? Well, we know that the ancient history that Luffy will learn, will yep. shock him into something. Doing something. And will be so shocking that if the world found out, the Celestial Dragons will be taken down. So, if the world found out that Celestial Dragons are not holy, yes. they did not create the world, they're a, they're a fraud, they're a sham. Is that what it's talking about? I have issues with this hat being literal power. It really doesn't make sense. Yes. It really does not make sense. Why would they keep this? The the Why? thing that I like is that there's seven leaders of the family of D. Mm-hmm. That one of these D family members had this hat. Yeah. And Roger has had his own hat or an homage to this character. Or someone gave it to Roger. It's the, it's the, it's the parting down of Will. Yes. That we know in One Piece. That we know that's a prevalent thing. But this hat that we see in this chapter... No. I don't think has massive relevance to Luffy's hat. No. Physically. I think it's a symbol. Yes. I think it's a symbol that... You know, it's it's a symbol of Joy Boy... Now. That clan, whatever you want to talk Do about. Do you have another theory? Yeah. And then we'll talk about it? Alright. A little bit of a tip, tidbits around. There's a couple little little theories. Little around, notes. Little, yeah. little notes here. The cover page with a now on it. You flip that bad boy around. You see the uh, the beings yeah. riding what looks like a straw hat. Yeah. This relates to the moon people. Is the straw hat representative of a craft? Okay. All that kind of thing. Yeah. That's a little bit of tip tidbit out there that. You could make connections to... Could be coincidence. Could be coincidence. Mm, 
Not really buying that one. Yeah. All right. What I think is very interesting, I'm about to bring up. Oda said there was a lurking legend mm. that will and be an antagonist for the Straw Hats. Could this be some sort of ancient being that is a weapon of celestial dragons? Maybe one of those warriors that we see at the entrance. Okay. Could it be one of those guys? Mm. They have these seven legendary warriors in stasis to come back and, you know, get, the get, get rid of get rid of the reincarnation of the Will of D. Maybe. And it's time to awaken this person to take out Luffy. Mm. Could that be a possibility? What do you think about that? Could this be the Loki legend? Because this room is massive. You can hide whatever the fuck you want in there. And he's going down there to check if this hat, this relates to Luffy and to Luffy, and he, Luffy's a threat. Also, another theory out there: mm-hmm. the hat is some sort of magical relic that changes to the form of what is most dangerous. Okay. This would help Mingo rule the world. Yes. But would it shock the world? Not really. Okay. So the takeaways that we must take from trying to generate a theory from this is you got to ask yourself why the Celestial Dragons were to keep this a secret, keep it under lock and key, mm. and why does Mingo think he could rule the world with his power? Mm. That's what you have to, uh, have to uh, answer. Otherwise, the theory doesn't really make sense. I'm trying to think about it. Yeah. And I come up to this roadblock over and over again. I don't want this to be some kind of chosen one destiny thing. Yeah. I don't want that either. Because it dilutes the journey. It dilutes the message of One Piece. Yes. Alright. Inherited will is not destiny. Yes. There's a difference there. Destiny is it's predetermined that this character will do this because he is the the chosen chosen one. one. The parting down of will is, you know... A reincarnation of a person that has their own autonomy, can still do whatever they want, Mm -hmm. but they have the capacity to achieve great things. Yes. I would much rather prefer that than this is some sort of destiny shit, that Luffy's the chosen one. I'll give you an example. I don't want it. it. Naruto. The Shippuden ruined the first part of Naruto because it's like... He was destined to Neji do all Neji was these right. Things. Yeah. Neji was right. Neji was right. You are destined to be great. Which is not... People read Shonen to get the message mm-hmm. that anything is possible and you can follow your dreams. Yeah. Now... But always... Why does it always come down to Child of Destiny shit? Yeah. I don't want the Destiny thing to happen. Now, would I be satisfied with this hat being a source of power? Physical power. It's one piece as possible. Kind of weird. Kind of real weird. You gotta look. There's a lot of questions there if that is true. Yeah. Really weird. And I don't know what the angle is on that. Yeah. People are throwing out that this is an Asian weapon. That it's Uranus. It would have to be explained. A lot. A lot. Do we get this reveal, this arc? Because it's in the middle of the arc. It's not we at the get end. a little bit more, Yeah. but I don't think we'll get the full reveal. Here's why I think we get the full reveal. Yeah. It's dropped in the middle of the arc. Okay. If this was some post-arc shit, I wouldn't expect it to be brought up at any time soon. Like the Florian Triangle. Okay. The monster in the Florian Triangle. We still don't know what the fuck that is. Yeah. Will we ever know? Maybe. Who knows? Okay. So, if it was in post-arc, I wouldn't be expecting answers. Mm -hmm. But it's not. It's in the arc. Why have... Why set up a mystery within an arc to not deliver on it? Mm -hmm. (sighs) This is theory bait. This is Oda working the crowd. I think... Because here's the thing. People were asking, why did Oda 
show us that Dragon was coming to the Reverie. Everyone thought that was the big secret. Yeah. What if this is the big secret? This is the big secret that gets revealed. Yeah. The way I'm... When you say this gets revealed, I feel like Mingo is going to escape. And tell everyone what it is. The meeting will be over. He'll be on the windowsill in his jail outfit and tell the world. Yeah. Now, not the entire world will find out. Because, you know, the kings will find out. But it doesn't matter. Will the audience Uh, find out? Yes, the audience will find out, I think. But I don't know if it's happening in this arc. This... It adds another dimension to what we think this the way this story is going. Yeah. And it kind of throws us off. Because, you know, we, we always bring up Luffy has to do go to Marijoa, beat the Navy, beat Blackbeard, beat the Pirate King, all that shit. This adds an extra dimension that I don't know what the fuck it means. I think this, because Mingo keeps on repeating, yeah. with this secret gets out, it's going to trigger something that's going to get the Celestial Dragons out of power. Yeah. That has to happen. That's Chekhov's gun right there. Yeah. The secret has to get out. Yeah. And has to cause... And it'll, it'll get event. out. It'll get out. But yeah. we gotta, we got to remember, we're going into Wano Country. It's true. Do you... Does Oda want to drop a massive bomb like... The war's about to begin and then we go into Wano Country. You know what I'm saying? Here's the thing. Oda always wants you to make you excited for what's happening next. next. After Wano. Now, I predicted a while ago that when we're 50, 60 chapters deep into Wano, people will be calling for the next arc. For the next arc. Is this exciting enough? The assault on Marijoa, is that exciting enough? Please. All this history secrets. People. Everything. People will be losing their minds to see the Navy versus Straw Hats. People want to see it. Yeah. So, is that next? Who knows? Are we beelining to the end? Here's the thing. Are we done? Are we, clo- are we closer to the, are we clo- with- are we closer to the end than we think we are? Luffy's an emperor now. We're definitely in the end game. Yeah. Alright, we're in the end game. I think this is set up for some sort of confrontation. Does this hat this week yeah. change your mind about how many arcs are left? No. So we still need to go to Albaf? I think this is the trigger. Yeah. Maybe Albaf is the safe haven after this. Okay. Luffy's fucked up the government. He needs to go hide somewhere. Yeah. Go hide in Albaf. What a better place to hide. Uh-huh. I drew it. Maybe, maybe this is the event. The Grand Fleet event. Size there? Size there. Uh, maybe they summon the entire Grand Fleet. All that kind of shit. Because we got that panel saying that the Grand Fleet was going to be some, part of some massive event. Yeah. What if this is that massive event? The okay. Siege of Marajor. People want to say that's Endgame. But is it? But is it? Raftel's the Endgame. Do we deal with the Marines before Raftel or after Raftel? Before Luffy's Pirate King or after, after Luffy's Pirate, Pirate King? King? Now, I side on the fact that Endgame's Luffy being the Pirate King with done. That supports that. So, the Marines before Raftel. Yeah. But that, my reason for that was the Ponoglyphs on... Maybe Still could happen. Yeah. Still could be part of that. I'm con- Christian, these chapters here confuse everyone. That's what they're designed for. And they're there to throw you a curveball and to, and to do this. Yeah. We didn't talk about what we think is going to happen next week. Okay. What do we think is going to happen next week? <sighs> Does the conference start? I think the conference finally begins. Yeah. Uh, Does Charles make his appearance? Maybe. I think the conference begins. Yeah. Um, while that's going on, probably More revolutionaries infiltrating, yeah. yeah. We could have set the chess pieces up before the game begins, you know what I'm saying? Well, they're already there, we don't really need more, you know. Yeah, but we need to know where Sabo is, where Molly is, where all the kingdoms are. Yeah. But they have a way to travel without being detected. Yeah, but we need to know where they are. The audience needs to know where all the chess pieces okay. are. Or most of them for right. for the game to begin. So I think we'll get a nice setup chapter next week for the events to start taking place. Yeah, yeah, that sounds that sounds possible. Yeah. Um 
surely we get nothing about this hat next week. Oh, no, no chance of the hat being revealed. Cliffhanger, you're going to get shit. You're going to get dick. Jack, jack shit, you're going to get it. Yeah. All right. So, you know, overall thoughts on this... If you can answer those couple questions, you your need... theory is on point if you can answer those questions. If you can't answer those questions, your theory is on shaky ground. Yeah. That's just the way you got to think about it. Alright. Christian, shall we move on? Yeah. That's how it Every week. We come to you with the question. Yes. How strong is Shanks? And every week, we answer that question. Shanks is the strongest. Shanks is the God King. Because there are people out there who think Kaido's the strongest. Who think Dragon's the strongest. Alright. Who think... The secret king of Mary Jo is the strongest. No. They would be all incorrect because Shakes is the strongest. Now, every week I come to you with irrefutable evidence. Yes. 100% factual evidence that Shanks is the strongest. And this week's evidence is following Shanks is so strong, he would be able to understand what is going on with this hat, with the information we got, and be 100% correct. Because, again, he has the 10,000 IQ because he's the God King. Yep. He'll figure it out instantly. He is past, present, and future. He knows what this secret is. Yes. That's how strong Shanks is. Shanks is the God King. That's right. Crucian. Power scale. Let's go. Yeah, Christian, every week we bring the people to power scale. You dropped the bombs last week. Changing the power scale forever. Had to be done. Who's going first? Is it me first? Yes. Now, interesting debate during the week. Yeah. Saint Charles. You said Stally was the absolute zero. Here's the thing. Let's test this absolute zero. Here's the thing. Durability feat. Yeah. Charles is not dead. Yes. After a devastating hit from Luffy. Now, shall we inspect the low, low, low tier? The trash tier. The trash tier. We have Spandam. Yep. We have Flompe. Okay. We have Koza. And we have Gaimon. Mm. How would they fare against an enraged Luffy fish? Would Gaimon survive? They would all be knocked out. I think Gaimon versus Charlos would be interesting. They both have guns? Yes. Charlos is some kind uh, of sniper-ish kind of deal. Uh, so he has... He hit, He can hit things. Yes. He's got some sort of gun skills. Yeah. He has some sort of durability. Mm-hmm. He can cop that Luffy hit and not Mexican die. standoff... Same Charles versus Gaimon. That's what I'm saying. It's it's a you can make an argument there. Okay. Saint Charles trash tier. Okay. Not Stally tier, because Stally would die from that hit. Yeah. Amazing that he's f- We didn't see his entire face. It would be funny if his if his face is caved in. It's not though. So durability, right yes. there. Mate. He's got some sort of durability feat. Christian. Your turn. Alright. Let me think for a bit. Because I'm looking at the scale right now and it's nice it's nice and plump. Yes. <laughs> nice and plump. Nice and nice and plump. Yeah. Uh you know I'm thinking there's a couple of spots that maybe are missing. Mm-hmm. Some characters. So I'm going to say Hmm. Do I see her here? I want to say Khalifa. From CP9. Khalifa. Interesting. Do I see her here? No, I don't. Where's Jabra? 
Where's Bluno? Jobin Bluno, high low. Yes. High low. No. Yeah, high low. Yeah. Okay. What do you think? Lowest Rokishi user in the squad. Same level. Talk to me about Tashigi. Verse. Khalifa. Khalifa has the soap fruit. Yep. Weird transforming of people. Weird transforming of people? Yes. She can make a... Make them clean? Coating? Mm -hmm. To protect herself from any damage. Yes. Some sort of soap casing. She has Rikishi styles. Bit of speed, bit of power. Mm -hmm. Required for Khalifa. Finger pistol? Yep. Has all the Rikishi styles. Kicking abilities? Yep. Not as good as Sanji, but... She does have kicking abilities. Yes. I want to make the argument... That... She beats... People like... Paulie. Now, we made the argument when we did Ryuma, when we did Blue Nun Jabra that the finger pistol could go through Mr. One. Yeah. Does that apply to Khalifa? We could maybe talk about her soap powers. Okay. Does that immobilize Mr. One? Mr. One. Because she does have an interesting devil fruit. Because she's not on the low high tier in regards to the characters that are there. No. But. Interesting power. Interesting power. Interesting abilities. We might be in this situation where we're kind of in the middle. Could go either way. Yeah. What do you think? Here's the thing. She has a, she's a member of CP9. Yep. She's got to be somewhat strong. She has the she has speed. She has abilities. Okay. Uh, she has an interesting devil fruit that can protect her. That can do a whole bunch of shit. Yep. Defeated by an army? Yes. But takes more punishment than, you know, uh, Miss Doublefinger, which is in the low, low tier. Which is in the low tier. Can she block in any a lot of attacks from her casing? Probably. Yeah. It's very hard. It, okay. it, it resisted a lightning attack from Nami. Yes. So... Uh, I want to say... Low durability when hit, though. Sort that's of. true. Yes. That's kind of true. Uh, well, the gold standard in low tier is indeed Mr. One. That's true. Thoughts on Mr. One? Finger pistol? That's what I'm saying. At speed. Does her finger pistol pierce Mr. One? If so, then we must put it in the high tier. High low tier. If not so, it is said the figure tier. pistol can pierce steel. Yes. It's hard. It's a hard one. Is it ridiculous that Khalifa beats post time skip to Chigi? No. Because Tashigi is that trash. Tashigi gets dominated by Monet. Tashigi's mm. not good, alright? Tig is not good. Yes. I say Khalifa wins that fight. Because of the CP9 skills. Where does your mind go instantly? Low or high low? I want to say high low. Yeah. Maybe the very bottom of high low. Yes. It might be the basement requirement for high low. Because of the, the interesting devil fruit, the Rokishis... She's a, she's definitely a fighter. Assassin. Assassin. She's in CP9, which is a feat in itself. Yeah. You know. Okay. I think high lows are right. Interesting, though. Done? Yep. Alright. Christian. Time for an interview. Next segment is from the man, Zoro Fanboy124. We discussed <laughs> multiple things. Indeed. Uh, if you don't know who he is, which I imagine you do. You know who Zoro is, come on. Long time community member. Long, very long time, dude. Uh, if you don't know who he is, go look at his channel and subscribe. Friend of Kunya Lightning. 
Yeah. Uh, they always talk about friend Sanji of, versus... Yeah, friend of Brago, etc, etc. Sanji versus uh, Zoro debate. It's always going on. Enjoy the interview. Got into a little bit deeper uh, knowledge of his history of One Piece, what he thinks about One Piece, uh, what he likes about it. All right. So, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Enjoy the interview. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Zoro fanboy, one, two, four. How's it going, guys? Uh, so, on this channel, we like to interview the community's finest. Uh, and we've had... Uh, I've been a fan of you, you for a while, man. I uh, really appreciate that, yeah. Along with uh, King of Lightning and uh, Brago and all that. Talk, just talk to me about one piece you know what, what what are you what are you looking forward to how are you feeling about it at the moment you know whole cake island uh, reverie what, what let's get started you know absolutely man uh i mean there's a lot to talk about uh obviously with with what's have been happening with uh with one piece if i'm being completely honest i'm 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 definitely more uh looking forward to what's happening next than i am interested in and in thinking about the past because for me, Whole Cake Island, as much as I love Whole Cake Island, I just feel like it, it had a lot of ups and downs, and I'm a little battle weary, so to speak, of, of Whole Cake Island. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm just yeah. we've, we've we've been kind of immersed in that arc for so long. It feels like that. Yeah, it, it's kind of like the side effect of having to like Dress Rosa, where we're just there for so long, we get tired, yeah. we're like, oh, what's next? Exactly. What's yeah, next? Yeah. yeah. Not 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 to say that it wasn't good. Uh, the ending was a little hit hit or miss, but for the general overview of it, I, I definitely it's a positive score for me. But um, I'm curious how you feel about the arc as a whole, though. Before we move on. Um, Whole Cake Island is an interesting arc for us because that's where we really started the channel, you know? Right. Um, we were kind of... We, obviously, when, you know, the fan base was in Whole Cake Island, there was a lot of, like, week-to-week, -week, you know, this is this is trash, this is all contrived and all right. that. And we were trying to curve that narrative and be like, look, you gotta, you're just gonna got to be patient and all that. Uh, right. We... Me and my brother, we, we you know, we enjoy Whole Cake Island. There's definitely pacing mm -hmm. issues that... Yeah. we've discussed in the past um and you know, the argument that uh, if the arc ended when the cake fell over or the chateau fell over or whatever you want to call it right. i think is a bit is a little bit silly because we wouldn't have gotten you know the catacru fire which is like right. everyone's like favorite part of the arc we wouldn't mm -hmm. have gotten a lot of things yeah. i just feel like Oda was trying to do something uh, new in his arc structures and kind right. of is trying to find his feet with the new style that he's going with it kind of Right. Hit and miss, I think, is the correct I mean, kind of where we Oda, the, 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 falls. For me, for me, Oda really clearly wanted to at least get things moving forward, the story. Yeah. And I feel like Katakuri was kind of like a benchmark in terms of Luffy's progress, in terms of where he needs to go. Because Oda, I think, is honestly moving forward with with the Yonko crews. Like, this is just an yeah. appetizer. The Big Mom is just the beginning. We're going to be doing de dealing with Kaido's crew. We're going to be dealing with, with even Shanks in some respect. I don't know how we're going to be dealing with Shanks, whether he's going to be an enemy or a frenemy or however he wants to, you know, we're going to go with that. And uh, Luffy is going to need to take that first step into, you know, being able to, to be on the same level of, or on par as some of these, uh, or at least close to some of these Yonkos. Obviously, Luffy's not even close to any of these Yonkos yet. But at least, you know, Luffy needs to develop his hockey and get that next step. And I think Katakuri, Oda was very clearly trying to showcase uh, Luffy's evolution in terms of his hockey and where he's going. So, uh, you know, you needed that because if it wasn't for Katakuri, and everyone loved that fight, I love that fight. Katakuri is one of my favorites now. Yeah, it's going to be good in the anime, you know. It's gonna, I think it's going to oh, be all-time. Oh, yeah. I, 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 it's got me really interested in the anime for someone who's not really, you know, keeping up with it on 100%. I'm definitely interested in that fight in the anime. So, you know, like you said, there are pacing issues and a lot of uh, shenanigans along the way, so to speak. But, uh, yeah, I think the ultimate goal was achieved uh, with Katakuri. And, you know, look at uh, chapter 903. You know, it all kind of paid off in the end with, you know, the crazy bombshells that we got. And, yeah. You know, Luffy's an emperor and the 1.5 billion well, berries well, and all that. I don't want to go out and say Luffy is an emperor because yeah. just because someone goes out and says that he is doesn't mean he is. You know what I'm saying? Like, just because New yeah. Big Morgan is announcing that he is basically taking that leap. That's, okay. that's, 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 you know, that's kind of like saying Buggy is a legitimate threat because of what his position is. It, yeah. yeah it, it just depends how, like, the fan base thinks about it, I think. There's, there's two sides of the fence. It's either, like, 
Right. If the world thinks he's an emperor in the story, then is he an emperor or does... Because obviously we know he doesn't have the power to be an emperor right. at the moment. Right, that's what I'm saying. It's just, yeah, right. it's just how you define Given the buggy treatment in terms of he's been elevated to a position he's not necessarily qualified for, at least not yet. Yeah, um, definitely. So can you really call him an emperor? Can, can you really do that? Uh, and uh, does the world acknowledge him as that? Maybe people yeah. in, the, in the paper are recognizing it, but even Blackbeard said, you're not ready for this yet. This is just bullshit. False. This, yeah. Fake news, as we call it. Fake yeah. news Morgan. Putting we, out. News. Yeah. On the show, we talk about like the, the, the structures of like the world and how it would work in our reality. And you got to remember, like the media is already fucked up as it is at the moment with like narratives and how they control, you know, the, the political sphere. If you have a one world government and a one world media, mm -hmm. it's going to be pretty easy to convince most of the world that, you know, things are true and things are false. So I don't know. It's just like a, a kind of like how you define it. It's we, as the readers, we know Luffy's not ready for the title. We're going right. to have to see if the world's acknowledged him as, as that. And we'll see how that. I'm sure a lot of people goes. who yeah. don't know any better would, but I think anybody worth, uh, you know, assault worth of their of worth in the new yeah. world is going to look at that and be Definitely. like, how much like, like, for example, not just in terms of how strong Luffy is, but what kind of influence does he have? Yeah. He, he has the, uh, the commanders under him. Right. Yeah. The, the, but they're, they're, they're not really that impressive. I mean, let's be honest, the, the sum total of those commanders weren't enough to really take on Doflamingo's crew. Yeah, you know, so how are they going to really deal with any Yonko if they go up against it? And in addition to that, Luffy doesn't have any territory outside of Fishman Island, and technically, yeah. Zo, like if you want to call it that, is okay. island, not really. But uh, so, I mean, Luffy doesn't have territory. He doesn't really have the manpower as of yet, though he's getting there. I don't want people yeah. to think I'm some sort of Luffy hater, although I've been accused of that on many occasions. I'm not. I'm really not. I'm just putting out the facts here. He doesn't have the the people with him quite yet. He doesn't have. You always, yeah, you always got to judge hard of the main character because you know that that's the character we've seen the most. And right, Yonko's a title that I hold in high esteem. So you know, I'm maybe a little overprotective of the title. So that's probably what it is. Doesn't have I think the. That, yeah. Doesn't have I the think that's what's happened because I was I was talking to King about this on multiple times, and you know how stubborn King of Lightning could be. Oh, I know. On multiple I, mean, occasions. I know more than anyone. I know more. I think you. Anyone. I think I think you guys would 100 percent agree with each other on this uh, emperor. Uh, debate that you know luffy oh, yeah so yeah. Um, cole, cole, cole says fake news morgan he he recognizes that this is yeah. not necessarily the truth put out there and uh you know he yeah yeah he we yeah, we talk about this all the time yeah for sure yeah um so just on the territory thing i have a feeling that the um countries that luffy saved will probably go under his banner in this arc in some in some way do you, do you think that's a possibility to give maybe Luffy more of a territorial standing in the world? Well, which Which places like are you talking Alabasta, about? Alabasta, uh, Just mm -hmm. Rosa, um, mm -hmm. Drum Islands. Yeah, uh, yeah, possibly. Any I mean, other kingdoms? I don't know about Drum Island. Well, yeah, maybe Drum Island. Yeah, that would make sense. Yeah. That would actually that would definitely play a, a role, a massive. Um, but then, if they did that, if the if the world governments basically. Or not the world government. If, the, if these governments uh, gave Luffy yeah. their, basically gave their their selves to Luffy, that would be a, an affront to the government. And world yeah, government. they'd have to leave the world government. They would have to uh, leave uh, the world government. Yeah. And I mean, I could definitely see that happening. But that's a big thing for them to do. It I is. can see it. But considering that this arc is going to be ten chapters, is this gonna, is that going to happen within ten chapters? What are, are we, I, keep mind, I keep that. I understand the editor. I yeah. you know is this, you know, yeah. Yeah. Are we on chapter, chapter salt, three this week? Is it a chapter three of Reverie this week? I think it is. If you depends how you count it, I'm not. I'm not sure. Right. Do you, do you, do you count when the revolutionaries turned up? He said ten more chapters. Yeah. Yeah. Chapters, I so. I don't. Yeah. I was assuming that it was always going to be pretty short. Ten mm -hmm. to fifteen was my initial thoughts going in. Yeah. How, how you feeling about the Reverie now, man? Like. Oh, I love it. Every chapter is yeah. great. It's, I love. No, you really know, you know, for me. Not, not to be like I said. I, I'm coming across such a Luffy hater, but I think it's a nice kind of change of pace to be away from Luffy and the Strides for a bit. Yeah, because I mean we got a shit ton of Luffy with, um, with what happened obviously with Marine Ford and he was by himself and Empal down. That was all fun, fantastic, but that was just so much Luffy, just him and all. And we haven't been without him for such a long time. Yeah, and I feel like this is such like a breath of fresh air that we're getting all these other interesting characters interacting that has 
pretty much not this i mean obviously luffy is going to be brought up in the reverie and everything that he did is going to be an important aspect of it but for the most part this is going to be nothing to do with really with luffy this is going to be outside of him this is going to be his father the revolutionaries uh Fujitora, him trying to get rid of the shijibukai system uh you know the celestial dragons all this stuff it, it really in the grand scheme of things it might have something to do with luffy but as of right now this is just focusing on other things and i feel like a lot of the most interesting parts of one piece are the world some of the characters that are inhabiting inhabiting the world that have nothing to do with the straw hats so i love it i really love it uh Uh, so what are are your expectations man for the reverie what do you think we're gonna get massive bombshells huge announcements do you think he's gonna um, gonna play his cards close to his chest What, what do you think well the revolutionaries are infiltrating and i find it interesting that not all of the revolutionary commanders are, are infiltrating. Uh, yeah. Betty's not infiltrating, uh, as far as we know. Um, I don't think we saw even cough. So even cough might not be there. Might not be there. Uh, yeah. We didn't see the other guy. I forgot his name. The mouse uh, commander. Uh, uh, Lindbergh, I think. It is. Lindbergh. We didn't see him. But I mean, he could be there. But my my point is, the most interesting aspect of this for me is is definitely what Dragon's going to do. Uh, I have a theory that it's not my theory, but it's, it's something that I I definitely uh, back up. Is okay. that uh, you know Vega Punk is going to switch sides? He's going to take uh, take up the revolutionary flag. I mean, I feel like he already was a revolutionary, or yeah. he's helping the revolutionaries, but it's going to be official. We, yeah. we hold that thought here as well that obviously Vega Punk's a part of the revolutionaries. Yeah, and, and he's probably going to switch, flip the switch on all the pacifists. The Order sixty six theory, whoever came up with it, it wasn't me. Yeah, uh, this is going to happen, and uh, you know the the pacifists are going to turn coat. And uh, they're going to make their strikes against the Celestial Dragons. Obviously, it was made very clear last chapter that the Celestial Dragons are the target, not the world government, the Celestial Dragons. So maybe the pacifists has run amok uh, in Mary Jo um, and just start taking out some Celestial Dragons. Maybe instead of, you know how they have the, the pacifists have the database of all the pirates with the numbers, right? Yeah. Maybe instead of hunting pirates, they hunt the Celestials and have names. And and basically, exactly. Yeah. Uh, this is a, yeah. That's my guess. My thing is with Dragon is he's he's about freedom and he's about you know overthrowing the celestial dragons maybe. Right. I don't know if it's a good look for him to do sort of like a terrorist act as it were. It's in not. Yeah, I don't think he cares about what how he looks. Yeah. He's been brandished as a the most traitorous person in the world right now. I don't think he cares how the world perceives him. I think he cares think, about yeah. doing things that are going to ultimately help the world and help the people yeah. in the world. And he feels like the Flesco Dragons are the one corrupting influence. I think it'd be difficult to kind of get the other kingdoms on side, but I don't know if he's... What I want from this arc is like a detailed monologue from Dragon about what his exact ideology is. I agree. Because it's it's unclear at the moment. I agree. Definitely some more Dragon stuff. And I was saying before in my stream that I would love... I just want one moment with Dragon and Garp where they speak like earnestly with each other. I, oh, I would love that so much. I know Garp didn't go up on the lift, but I mean they're both in the general area, father and son. There has to be something there. I would just, I would just love that to death. It, uh, it, that'd be definitely a good scene. We might get a few hints, you know, what happened between them and all that. The, the thing is with Dragon is, does Dragon intend to install himself as the supreme no. ruler, or no, does no, he no. intend to? disband the navy no. and have anarchy like what's 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 his what's his political view because if he thinks he can install a new government that can't be corrupted do you think that's naive in a sense i don't think he's he's thinking about necessarily reinstalling himself i don't know what his ultimate plan is no. um because you know in, in terms of our actual world just taking out despots doesn't work you, you have to like yeah. set up something to replace it it's just yeah, it just yeah, you can't just do that. But in yeah. terms of dragon, in this world, the celestial dragons are all up on their pedestal and, and are so revered because of their bloodline. And if you eliminate that bloodline, then there's no one to really stand up above you. It just it falls to the to the people who are accountable. So at least you know, I feel like you know the the the, the marines would have to. I think, I think dragon would just leave it. Uh, I don't see him taking over because then you know, who's going to follow him in the marines? This guy's dragon. This guy's a. You know, he he murdered a bunch of Celestials. They're not going to follow him. Uh, It's not going to happen that way. Um, Who know? I don't know who would take up the mantle, or if they would do some sort of democracy or some sort of council. Yeah, I think it would be up to. I think Dragon would leave it up to the people in the the Marines to to figure that out. It's just interesting to think what he's thinking, which we will we won't see for a while, hopefully soon. But 
I'm not I'm not convinced that we'll get everything we want in Reverie. Because that's gonna not be how Oda does it, you know? Mm-hmm. No, I know. It's always I mean, always hints, always always cloak and shadows, yeah. you know. You gotta you gotta figure things out by yourself. People uh, and myself included, I'll, I'll put myself in this. They always set their expectations a little too high. Too high, uh, yeah, definitely. And then, they, you know, they're always disappointed when it's not quite what they expect. But, consi- I mean, we're going to get something with Dragon. That's what I really want. I'm just yeah. guessing in terms of what I think will happen. But what I, what I really just want is some Dragon greatness. That's all, that's all yeah, I'm hoping these, for. These world-building sure, chapters you know, are probably, sure. like, my favorite, just in terms of, like, mm-hmm. how One Piece works mm-hmm. and, and how the story works. Because if you... What I've been, what I've been thinking about lately, reading other manga is, if you don't have a world that's uh, that's rich and has depth, nothing that the main character does really matters. It doesn't wow. really have context. Mm-hmm. So like, their goals don't mean anything, or like, what does it mean to do this or that? Mm-hmm. That's why I think One Piece works so well because it like everything that the characters do cement themselves in the world. Right. And it's a living, breathing world. So while this yeah. is happening with Luffy, a bunch of other things are simultaneously happening happening in the world. You've got what's happening in in, in Wano happening. Who knows what's going on there? You have an, really? you, know, you have obviously the reveries happening, and this is happening just right after what's happening with Luffy. You have you know Blackbeard doing his stuff. It, you know, it's, it's all these things it are simultaneously. Yeah, you know, yeah. it just shows how well Otis set everything up. Because in like in reality, nothing is really actually happening. It's just his own his own mind that's oh. that's writing this on the page. It's just us yeah. that thinks things are happening. It's, I, I love stories of living, breathing writer, worlds. Yeah. Yeah. We sure. call ourselves here on the podcast the Red Force Podcast. Obviously, we love Shanks. I figured, my boy. Talk to me about the God King. Uh, yeah. Talk to me about. Shanks, what do you want to see? How strong is he? Yeah. I've seen. Hold my little Shanks figure up. It's, it's uh, such, such a good figure, man. Did you drop it? I caught it. I caught it. <laughs> while I talk about there. Shanks, I will, yeah. I will present him while I speak about Shanks. What, so, what, what I think what, about what, him in terms what of what? Want? Yeah. Well, obviously, you know, he's the strongest in the series. We don't need to debate. Well, that's debatable. <laughs> That's that's honestly debatable. But, uh, Mainly because maybe. of that Kaido line, I'm still, uh, you know, the strong. But I think Oda put the strongest thing, thing for a reason. Like, there's something special about him that doesn't. But he also did say in a one-on-one fight, Kaido will win. That just doesn't matter who it is. So I don't know. Yeah. I, I, you know, I, but, you know, but I'm willing to give Shanks a benefit of the doubt on that. But then there's yeah. still Dragon, and I have a high, high hopes for Dragon. Maybe I'm just, you know, maybe I'm overhyping things. I don't know, but. Yeah, I have high hopes for Dragon as well. So, so yeah. when when are we going to see the dra- the Shanks Luffy arc? My bet is after Wano. I'm not sure what you're what you're thinking. I just I, mean, I Oda never goes in a straight line. There's always yeah. zigzags and points that are met in between things. And Oda, you know, he definitely doesn't. <laughs> I mean, I remember the first time they talked about Fishman Island was a long was like maybe like years before they actually went there. Uh, and they talk about, about it in the series as if it was, they were right around the corner from it, right? Yeah. So yeah. it was during, I forget when it was that they talked about it, but it was a long time before. My point is, Oda always likes to take little sidetracks and do things. Yeah. There's going to be Zo-type arcs in between everything. So once we deal with Wano, assuming Kaido's taken down, which is still something I don't necessarily think will happen, but it could. Okay. Kaido is taken down. We yep. still have the situation in Albaf, which I think that's still a thing. Yep. You still have, you know, any like can can you still have a uh, obviously this is the four Yonko arc, so something has to happen with Blackbeard. I still hold the belief that Blackbeard's going to get to Shanks before Luffy does. I need I, I need to see that. I'm sorry to say it. I need to see it. Uh, it'd be so painful. Just... I'm sorry to say it, but it just it just fits so well. Like especially Marine Ford, they had that one shot, that single shot where they were yeah. standing like line line against each other like and, and they were showing like little small shots of like the, the matchups between the different members mm. you know what i'm saying so it, it it's been definitely foreshadowed especially with shanks I, yeah, bar, I think given by I black think shanks will be killed by blackbeard eventually but i have this kind of theory slash idea that there'll be a training arc between shanks and luffy after one I don't, I don't, I'm not sure, maybe 20 chapters quite similar to like a zone. Well, Shanks, Shanks says that, you know, he basically, I would, I would imagine based on his comment after the, uh, the bounty reveal, that he yeah. feels like Luffy's almost on his level, or at least almost to, to the point where he can meet him now. 
So I don't know yeah. if like, training him after that would make sense. I, I, I'm still, I'm still like really kind of disappointed with the Mihawk training thing. I didn't think he should have been training Zoro. I thought that was a bit of a, a okay. mistake, you know, personally. I don't have a big problem with it, but I don't want to see it with Shanks. Uh, you know, Shanks is supposed to be, I know Luffy looks up to him and stuff, but yeah. I feel like they're rival pirates. They may be friends, but, you know, Luffy should, should if Luffy gets to him before Shanks dies, there should be a at least a friendly fight to determine, yeah. you know. There Where? definitely, definitely should be a friendly fight. The reason why I'm, uh, I think it so strongly is because it's really the only opportunity to give um, flashbacks, uh, Usopp and Yasop, uh, yeah. character moments between the characters, and like give Luffy a, a power increase that kind of makes sense for him to go into the end of the series. Because how strong well, is he going to get? That power, up that power is going to happen with the Kaido situation. I don't. Yeah, I'm not sure that's going to be a one on one. Probably not. No, definitely not. No, I mean, I, needs, I mean, I don't know. It, I didn't think. I didn't think he saw the chance against Kaido Kure in situation like Oda can write it however he wants to. As far as the story has showcased right now, honestly, there should be zero percent chance Luffy wins that fight. There should be a zero. I don't know what's going to happen till now, till then, and what the. Certain, Kaido might have a stomach ache and it might hold him again. I don't know. He'll, man. he'll I don't definitely, know right. yeah. He'll definitely have. They'll definitely have to go on an adventure to weaken him in Wano in some way. That's that's probably the the problem. I gonna be I'm problem. still on board with the supernovas going at him simultaneously. Yeah. I, think I think that's that would be so well. fucking epic and yeah. badass. You know, I just feel yeah. yeah. Uh, Oda's with, showcasing with, these supernovas for a reason. He's he has high hopes for them, high plans. Speaking of Wano, man, talk to me about your boy Zoro. Why do you like him so much? What what Does what do you Wano want to see from him? Do you, do you see this god? He's a he's a specimen, no doubt about that. He's a <laughs> specimen. Look, look, man. It's not because of the muscles. Not because you know he's he's a swordsman. Actually, k- kind of like I've always like uh, gravitated towards swordsmen, badass swordsmen. Yep. Uh, my favorite movie, uh, anime movie of all time, is Sword of the Stranger. I, I okay. you know, I'm a big fan of Samurai Champloo. I just love Samurai and Swordsman in general. So Zoro always kind of gravitated toward, toward me. But for, for, to be completely honest, I was Zoro and Sanji like neck and neck for the longest time until uh, probably Thriller Bark. Like okay. the first moment where I was like a little bit more Zoro than Sanji was when he threw the sword up in the air and like held out his arm. I was like, that's fucking epic as hell. And he just kind of cool. like, you know, I, my luck reverses its curse. Let's see who wins. That was, yeah. that was just so badass, man. That was the most badass shit ever. Um, so I love that moment. And honestly, I love both of those characters simultaneously uh, going up till, till Thrill of Bark. But that sacrifice scene, I mean, it was good for both characters because Sanji also had his moment too. But, oh, man, I, I just remember. That's probably my, my favorite One Piece scene because I never – it's a shame I didn't have my channel at that point because my reaction to that would have been like I would have gotten stripped naked. I would have just ran like a madman all over the place. It was bad. But – Seriously, like that moment was just so unbelievable. I just freaked out so much. It was, yep. I, it's just it's, a legendary moment, and that really put me over the edge. Um, it's just such a grand, like, character statement from Zoro, like his determination and will to. Right, and it wasn't just because he was badass. It was right before that he talks to Kuma and he talks about his own dreams, and he's like, "What do my dreams matter if I can't even protect my captain?" Like that was, and it just shows the development of him because when we first saw him join, he's like, "Look, if you ever get in the way of my dreams, I'm gonna leave this crew. I don't give a shit." All right, I'll join you for now, but I'm not going to continue to do that if you get in my way. And that to show like his loyalty and his respect towards Luffy after all these years, um, and all the stuff that they've been through. They clashed during you know uh, what happened, Whiskey Peak. They had that small fight, and uh, you know, they, yeah, it just shows the the bro the bromanship between himself and Luffy after all the things that have happened. You know him, you know backing up after the Usopp stuff and talking to him about Usopp. There's just so many like moments in the series where he stood up and you know s- stepped up basically yeah, and took definitely. that that vice captain like stance in my opinion. Yeah, second, in, second in command, vice captain. He's just, whatever you want to call it. What what I like about him so much is like his character on the surface seems so simple. Mm-hmm. When you when you when you look closely, you can find the little details about his character and, and what he's mm-hmm. about. Like yeah. I always go back to the scene in Alabasta when in the bath and he's washing Chopper. And he's always he's always carrying Chopper, you know. He cares yeah. for like his crew, but he's not going to say it. He's, right. He's a very uh, he acts he acts tough, but he's got he's really got a heart of gold, and that kind of like echoes his character. Yeah. 
Definitely. Like saving Robin, uh, you know, not saving, but like ca- catching Robin when she got struck by an L. Yeah. And being cool. super pissed about that. Like he, he obviously, ha- you know, he cares for his, pe- for his people. And, uh, you know, he's, he's got more emotion that he lets on. He's deeper than people would like to admit. People I want to say, oh, just a stoic badass. And yeah, that's his archetype. But yeah, th- there's a lot of layers to him that I feel like, you know, maybe aren't so obvious, but are, are there. Yeah, no doubt. He's definitely uh, a hype piece first. He's, mm-hmm. he's all about proving hype. But Shanks, but Shanks is, you know. Shanks like is that. your favorite. Yeah. He's been he's, in like five years. Shanks is like the promise of 30 years. Or well, probably when we get to a thirty years of like yeah. Luffy's Luffy's growth as a character coming full circle, yeah. which is uh, you know something all all of us fans dream about, seeing like that moment. Talk I agree to me about Wano Country. Mm. Yeah, how long do you think it's gonna be? What kind of characters are we dealing with? Uh, Zoro's oh, moment. Uh, what, first what off, do you think? in terms of length, if it's not whole cake length, at least I would be very surprised. Yeah. At least, maybe even longer. Maybe even longer than Dressrosa. I think whole cake was longer than Dressrosa. Uh, whole cake, I think, was 77 or 80, and really? Dressrosa was 100. 100 and yeah. something, yeah. yeah. So it, it'll be longer. I think it'll be longer than Dressrosa. I really, I really do. Um, there's a lot of things to cover. There's just so much that are, has been hinted already that I could just point to because we have Marco who's going to be on uh, on Wano, and I feel like yep. the Marco situation with. Um, with what's happening with all the commanders being taken out, uh, that's going to be a plot point. That's going to be certainly, uh, I, I can't imagine it not being uh, resolved in, in Wano because he's also going after Luffy. So, okay. Yeah, so that, that, that's another thing. I forgot. What, what was his name? Um, Whitebeard's son. Weevil. Uh, son. Well, yeah. Weevil. Edward Weevil. 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 Yeah. Weevil's, Weevil's, uh, uh, is certainly going to be in Wano and going to be an antagonist in Wano for sure. Um, then we have to deal with, with the Zoro situation. We have to figure out what's been happening because while simultaneously whole cake has been happening for how many days that's been, Wano has been happening at the same time. So I guarantee things have been happening to Zoro because nothing ever just goes right for the Straw Hat. Something always comes up. Definitely. And he's got that sword on his hip. That's, you know, Ryuma's sword from, you know, the, the national hero Ryuma. And then Kinemon attacked him. I can imagine uh, other people attacked him. He's trying to recruit swordsmen. And I think we're going to get Zoro backstory stuff, possibly. So that's another thing. Then you have the supernovas. At least Kid is on, is on Wano, um, most likely. And having to rescue him or, and his involvement in the arc is going to be a big deal. Yeah. And not even to mention everything that they need to resolve in the, the Shogun and uh, Momonosuke. Uh, and it's just, I can keep going forever. I'm not going to. There is a lot of material to cover, and I worry that people will get the same feeling they got in Dressrosa and Hoke Colin where fatigue starts to set in. The problem with Dressrosa for me is that, yes, you can have a lot of different story elements happening simultaneously. Yeah. You can, and you can have, keep people interested. It's just that with, with Dressrosa, there was a situation where a lot of the elements of the story elements that were introduced are ones that we don't yeah. care about or ones yeah. that we would just have less interest in. Like, you know, what's happening with the Tontadas. Uh, you know the the Rebecca situation, which wasn't as interesting. At least, sure. me, at least for me, I can I can only speak for myself. I'm not sure why Sugar exists and the the Tontada exists other than to give Usopp a character moment. It's kind of like, no, it's, yeah, it mechanically did Dofaminko need this system where he had toy soldiers that you know the got rid of their memories, and it's just a weird kind of thing yeah. that added twenty thirty chapters. Yeah. And like Kiros and Rebecca back f- backstory is kind of really right. long and we don't really care about them. Because Oda likes Oda likes having, you know, it's 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 one thing to introduce a strat to an arc in an island, but he also yeah. he always seems to have to have a person that needs to be helped by the strats. Like a single ent- singular entity that they need to yeah. help, that we need to know about their story and everything. And you don't have to have that, quite honestly. I mean it's yeah. one thing to like, you know, save the, the the town or the city or whatever the case may be but you don't need to have like you know we don't need 20 chapters on this person's backstory from the town and you know 
he goes a little too deep into it. I know he likes to dive into it. There seems to be like a trend with those two arcs that I mentioned where there's a character with a really weird devil fruit that's like key to the entire story, like Sugar in this case and Brule in Hulk Echo. Yeah, I honestly like, you know, I, I love One Piece more than anything, man, but that Sugar situation with Usopp was one of the worst. I mean, one of the worst things I've read in manga. It's it was bad. I know a lot of people disagree with me on this, but that like you know hot whatever the ball that fu- yeah the, it's a basketball uh, situation yeah. that was and her free oh my that was that was we like this, that was fairy yeah, tale levels of of terrible. We had this debate uh, a few weeks ago about uh, Usopp and his character development, hmm. and people in the comments were bringing up subtle nuanced points that i don't think are clear enough in the story to give them a hundred percent credence mm. it's kind of like i always think usa will be afraid but he'll go into battle for his friends right right the people seem to have the biggest issue with him running away from sugar and trouble i think i give him back. a pass and i'll tell you why yeah I hated the 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 the, resu- the you know the resolution to that situation, but yeah. you have to understand that when I believe, if I'm not mistaken, when uh, when Usopp ran away, he had forgotten about Robin. Yeah, he forgot he about Robin. Point. Yeah, but you know, does he not care about the Dontado as well? I don't know. It's kind of weird. He didn't even know them. Like, like, are you gonna like risk your life to save a bunch of of like little dwarf people that you've just met, like maybe a day ago? I feel like a hero yeah, of a story right. would probably a great hero of the sea might, you know. But he's not a great hero. We all know he's a coward. He's supposed to represent the everyman. He's supposed to represent like a one of the readers. Yeah, if you I mean, be completely honest, if you're in that situation as as, your, as yourself, are you uh, and your your life would be in danger to help these people? Yeah, I'm sure some people would be, you know, you know, uh, or have that kind of mentality to run into the danger. But most people wouldn't. So I'm not gonna you know fault him because it's in his character to be coward. I'm not gonna fault yeah. him for saying shoot. The problem part. with that fight is like Oda couldn't shoot a little girl in the face. It's kind of uh, a bit too much. So it's kind of his fault for making the character a little girl. But, yeah, uh, yeah. She just passed out from a silly face. Like That's at no point, at no oh. point, the at no point, no one suggested that Ushop shoot her in the plan going up to the toy house. It's <laughs> like, uh, all right, that this is a weird plan. But we'll go with that. Terrible plan. I, did, ugh, I hate that you brought this up because you're making me angry now. <laughs> Thinking about this. Let's let's talk okay. about a good Uso character moment. His right. awakening of Haki. How did you feel about that in the manga? Because in the anime they kind of fucked it up, but in the manga yeah. I felt like it was like deserved and a good yeah, moment I, for him. I I thought that was good. I thought that was good. I, I you know I didn't like the the bringing back uh, the call back to the uh, to the silly face thing. Yeah, but. In terms of him unlocking the hockey, I loved it. I thought it was a good moment for him. Uh, I'm happy. I didn't expect that he would be the one to do it. I, yeah. You know, I wouldn't have guessed if next straw had to, to show hockey would be Usopp. But you know, it definitely makes sense. You know, to be a sniper, to like have your user's hockey to be able to locate the position of your, you know, the person you're shooting. Yeah, it, may, it makes a lot of sense. So uh, I'm fine with it. I think it was good, really well handled in the manga. Uh, and in terms, in terms of his just his development in general. You know he's up and down. Uh, yeah. It's kind of because Oda obviously you don't want to show him have too much progress because his whole goal, his whole purpose for sailing is to become not a coward. So if you show That's progress, right. then you're pretty much resolving it. There needs to be, I think, in Oda's mind, there needs to be that defining moment where he takes that massive turn, and yeah. he can't show too much coolness and you know and stuff develop it until yeah. that moment happens and, and like, in addition, if you, there's also the comic aspect of his of him being a coward which is the, he plays into a that's lot the thing if you change his character you kind of lose that dynamic on the crew right exactly if he's not a coward then you lose a lot of that comedy aspect so i uh, he kind of wrote himself into a corner so to speak so to speak in that in that regard but yeah, I don't have a problem with Usopp in terms of what he's what he's doing, and then, you know, I just uh, I just really hated that sugar moment. That's all. Yeah. yeah, talk to me about the cook of the crew, Sanji. Mm-hmm. We we love Sanji here, but we know we have issues with his character in Whole Cake Island. Mm-hmm. Uh, I didn't like how he wasn't really all in with Luffy. Mm-hmm. It's kind of hit and miss. Um, Oda didn't give us a fight in Hulk Island. 
And I've got a question here from a fan that put in the co comments from last week. From uh, Return of the Slave, what do, what, do, what do you need to see from Saji to declare him stronger than Zoro? What, what do you I need to see? Hmm. Yeah. That's an interesting question. Hmm. What would I need to see? Because, I mean, I'm, I'm all up to the possibility. I'm, I'm trying to be open-minded. I just, I just need to see evidence. Uh, I don't know what that evidence would be because it hasn't happened yet. Yeah. Every, every yeah, single nice. aspect of evidence in terms of what, who is stronger has been leaning in the side of Zoro. Um, yeah. You know, in terms, I don't want to go into the Zoro's Sani thing too much. Because, no, wait, no, you know, I, me and Cooking and Lightning have 50 videos online talking about that already. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, but, but, but essentially, you know, with Sanji, I, I want to see him defeat an opponent that I think that we would, if, if Sanji could defeat an, an opponent, right? One-on-one, -on -one, fair, no help, like, you know, no outside inf influence or interference or lucky breaks. Sanji legitimately one-on-one -on -one defeats an opponent that I know Zoro cannot. Yeah. And then, okay. then I think he deserves the credit. I think but, his development in his raid suit is going to be pretty cool for his character as well, because we didn't really get resolution to the germa situation right in yeah the race is, so, uh, is a nice power up but uh, i don't have a problem i don't know why so many people have i i do know why but i don't have a problem with the with the raid suit i, th I think right. the raid suit moment in wano maybe will be i need to put aside my past to you know save my crew and then right. he'll use it right Which, I I think know, people have some... a problem with it because like you know oh, sanji's the guy who doesn't use weapons he you know he doesn't need any outside you know any gear or anything to be strong which i get but the fact of the matter is like look the the raid suit isn't making you strong it's not like some bum off the street can take the raid suit and put it on and all of a sudden be a badass it's amplifying what you already have it's it's like it's just, it's exactly it's 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 just helping it's, you and it's also it's also unclear what it does specifically as well so we'll probably right. find that out exactly um i've got another question here from andre he mm -hmm. asks uh what fight with zoro are you looking forward to to the most is it mayhawk or is it shiryu what, what do you think hmm. what do you think about the theory of shiryu and the, of the rain being the final villain for zoro or is it mayhawk what what do you think is uh, the most possible I don't. I don't know. It, see, I have all these interesting theories floating around my head. Yeah. It, it, one. One. One of those is possibly Shiryu kills Mihawk, which gives Zoro a little bit more of an incentive. On them, because you have to understand, like Zoro, like I said before, once he started training under Mihawk, it, you yeah. kind of lost that edge of that conflict going forward, uh, in my mind. So Zoro defeating Mihawk isn't as important to me as it maybe was before then, because you know he's going to be using some of his teachings to defeat him. Which is kind of lame, in my opinion. So, okay. my thought, my thought is, maybe I'm just hoping this is the case, but I feel like Shiryu defeating Mihawk and taking the title upon himself as the world's greatest swordsman by defeating Mihawk eventually down the road, maybe even killing him. Who knows? That that mantle switches on. I, I, everyone's dying apparently. Shanks is dying. Mihawk's dying. I don't know, but uh, yeah, it'll transfer to me to, to Shiryu. And obviously, Luffy and Blackbeard have this rivalry going. This that would just kind of amplify and definitely build up that fight to the Shiryu fight, which I think is necessary. Okay. So, yeah, and, and yeah. also if Shanks dies, it gives more of a fight uh, amplification to the Usopp uh, versus, you know, maybe like a Van Auger uh, because, you know, yeah. he'll kill Yasop. So I just feel like that would just make so much sense from a story standpoint to have that happen. Okay. It's, it's so hard to predict, you mm -hmm. know, end game stuff. And yeah. we, we kind of do that. A little bit too much on this show kind of being like we know all, all these pieces and we think we know what's going to happen how do they connect and you know it's kind of just like a fool's errand at the end of the day because no one's ever right on what's <laughs> going to happen in one piece which is kind of the fun thing i guess yeah i mean if we did speculate there'd be nothing to talk about you know mm -hmm. so there's a lot to speculate on definitely definitely do you what do you think about shiri with the diamond fruit do you think that's that yeah, theory that was, uh... is plausible I have an issue with it in the fact that it doesn't become a swordsman's fight anymore. It becomes right. a Zoro's got to surpass a diamond. Yeah, I, mean, I would have a problem with it, mainly because it would just be kind of a replay of the Mr. One fight. Yeah. Um, it would be like Zoro getting his ass whooped, not able to cut diamond for 95% of the fight. Then there's a moment where he finds something out and he starts to cut him or he does a one shot. Yeah. Which I just feel like, you know, we've seen that before. I don't think we need to see it again. Uh, I like uh, it's interesting. 
interesting that that kind of fruit is powerful it would make sense for someone to have it like shiryu but um no i i agree i think uh, more of a swordsman fight against a swordsman yeah that makes more sense uh no double fruit involved you know what what is it about one piece that brought you to it that you love so much about it uh, initially initially when i started watching one piece what really got me kind of excited i don't know why but what really got me excited was was the, actually the opening it seemed like such a fun lively energetic colorful adventure you talking like, about the one piece rap are you talking about no, not not person? not the ya 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 yo bullshit okay i don't care what anyone says that that rap sucks about we go i'm talking about yes uh, yeah yeah we go. Okay. Um, when I first heard, you know, heard it, uh, well, I started with the anime, then I got into the manga afterwards. So, yep. Uh, yeah. Once you saw Luffy running towards that cliffside and him jumping off in like the bright sky and the sea and all this craziness happening, yeah, I was a little turned off initially, initially by the art and everything, but I was intrigued, um, which was interesting because you know I was looking for a long term series, so it kind of worked out perfectly. I had just finished the anime Get Backers, which was like a hundred and something episodes, old series. Good though, I love, it. I like it a lot. Um, and I was just kind of like on that high of like, okay, I got to get into another like long term series, get into it, and just dive into the world of it. And I looked up like really long, uh, expansive worlds uh, online. I just googled that, like you know. And I, you know, One Piece was con- constantly being popped up, and I'd, I'd seen little things of One Piece before, but the animation always kind of like, I mean, eh, I don't know, it, yeah, I'm not sure, but I gave it a chance, and I was very skeptical. But once that opening popped up, and you know, Luffy running around, Kagi Atsume, that got me. I was like, okay, all right, all right, One Piece, yeah. I'm, I'm on board. I'm I reckon on- if if they put We Go in front of every episode of One Piece, I probably wouldn't have a problem with it. <laughs> Yeah, it's just, it's a, just, so it's just such a good one. I love it. We are we are um, pretty good as well. But in terms of like the moment in One Piece where I was fully hooked, yeah, uh, it's probably Mihawk showing up yeah, and radio. cutting all those ships. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, the East yeah. Blue was good, but not particularly amazing to me. I almost dropped it at one point. I've said this many times, but uh, during the Seer Village arc, those the the Nyaban brothers. I was like, this is the most corny shit I've ever seen in my life. If it wasn't for Captain Kuro, you guys have Captain Kuro to thank. If it wasn't for him and his badassness, I probably would have dropped One Piece. Yeah, we reviewed um, volumes one to five uh, a few weeks ago. Nice. And we came to pretty much the same conclusion, which is Oda's still trying to find his feet with these arc structures. He's trying to find his feet with his how his villains work and... Zero Village, I think, is a response to Buggy being um, having lap of, uh, a lack of depth in his villainry, as it were. He he's, mm-hmm. he's pretty simple in Orange Town, right? And he, I think, Oda wanted to try and uh, make a more cerebral and you know a villain with a plan in Zero Village, right. but at the end oh, of the day, yeah. we we just didn't give a fuck about the motive behind yeah. Captain Kuro. And then I think he figured it out, which is the most interesting villains are the ones with uh, depth in character rather than depth in plot, which is what makes such a like, you know, like crocodile, Dokuminko, yeah. you know. And he, and, he, and he starts to figure arc structure out in Brattier, but really kind of uh, pinpoints it in uh, Arlong Park. It's just... Yeah, Long Park, really, everything comes to a head. Uh, yeah, it, it I, took him, you know, it, it took him time to figure it out, which is I- interesting for him. As well yeah, as there's a lot of emotional it. investment in Arlong Park because of Nami, so that that just added to it. You know, it, uh, the other uh, other villains, it was great. I mean, we didn't. I mean, I didn't really care about those little kids or 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 you know, uh, Usopp's girl. Um, you know, I I honestly like you don't have any investment into like the resolution of these issue of, of these issues, right? Yeah. But once Arlong comes, and obviously, you know, Nami's, you know, part of your crew has been for a little bit, and then leaves, and then, you know, that's that, like, oh, shit, what's happening situation, and you learn her story, there's just so much more more to fight for, you know, in that situation, that fight has meaning. I mean, a fight Absolutely. being good, it doesn't necessarily mean just choreography or mm. landscape or scale. That's not what makes a fight necessarily good. It's it's the stakes involved. It's the emotional connection you have to the characters. Definitely. And uh, the, the villain, uh, you know, also, you know, in terms of his goals and things and what, that, that kind of like all those things meshing together make a great fight, a uh, great, you know, 
confrontation with the villain in my mind. So after after you saw May Hulk and Bright Eye, you were just completely hooked. No no worries about it. Or did you have a moment yeah, where you? Because it like, showed to me like cause when I was first watching it, it's, when Luffy beat everyone, it was pretty easy for him. And it's like okay, you know, it's just gonna be the series where the main character just always wins and there's no you know problems and he's just all stronger than everyone. That's just how it is. But Mihawk comes along and just murders all these sh- these or not murders, but just destroys all these ships and yep. just comes along and sitting in a little dinky boat with candles and a and he's just sitting there arms crossed like mm, I'm a fucking badass. Yeah. And, and it just shows like that this is just one dude and yeah he's the world's strongest swordsman, but this. The world is much, much bigger. I think, yeah, at that, at, exactly. At that moment, we understood the scope of, of the world and that kind of set everyone's imagine, imagination alight. Because, you know, uh, Zoro gets, cuts fodder rice and he's like, you're just a, you know, just small frog in a, in a, in a well. You don't know anything about the world. He's like, you know, and it's just like, wow. Yeah. So apparently, apparently yeah. things are going to get crazy. So, so we're in the river now. Give me your prediction. Or next chapter. What do you What do you think? Is next chapter. Happen? Ooh, that's tough. It's tomorrow. We, so. But yeah. <laughs> I don't know when you're uploading it's this. Tomorrow. So um, it'll, it'll be out by the time we upload this. All right. Uh, so, fuck. I'm sorry. I probably shouldn't be cursing that. My apologies. Good, good um, no, you're all right. We don't, we don't care here. All right. Cool. Um, something to do with the revolutionaries. Maybe we get some some Steli and Sabo stuff. Um, okay. You know, I mean, we saw the revolution start to infiltrate last chapter. Yep. I don't know. Maybe, maybe we'll Oda will probably save that for like a big moment. He will just pull it out out of nowhere. But I feel like you know, the, maybe it'll start next chapter. The the reverie itself will start. Like all the the, the people well, will sit start down, to sit on down, the table, yeah. and interact. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Maybe some mention of Luffy. Like, oh, you know Luffy. Yeah, you know Luffy. Oh my God, it's Luffy. Maybe something like that. Um. Yeah, I, I feel like, you know, I mean, there, there'll probably be more to it than just that, but, um, yeah. yeah. And the Reverie Part 4 on uh, Braga's channel, that is a yeah. couple of days, is it? Know. Yeah, but I work all day on Saturdays, so I'm going to miss so. it. Most of it, I think. You're pretty, it usually goes for eight hours or so, doesn't it? If it goes for eight hours, I get off at, like... 11 but then again i have like Damn. this thing i'm doing you know, I, yeah. I, i'm not gonna so be able to make it. it i'm gonna miss it. it sucks i was in the last two reveries and yeah. it was always a blast and uh, this one's gonna be hype brago knows how to host a stream more than pretty much anyone he's a beast so um yeah. i don't know uh what, yeah. how do you, how are you feeling about the one piece community these days mm-hmm. are, you, are you happy with where it is do you feel like people kind of are quick to judge the series that have just jumped on board what do you think is happening hmm. with with the community at the moment? It's 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 hard to say. I'm uh, I'm not as plugged in as much as I used to be, uh, okay. mainly because you know I, I'm just very busy. But in terms of what I've seen, um, I I don't think that there it's been worse. The community has certainly been worse. Okay. Um, I just this is more of a problem with YouTube in 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 general, I guess. But I just feel like you know. Although there is diff, di, you know, different content in One Piece and whatnot, what people are putting out there, I just wish that there was a little bit more variety in what people did. And I know I'm part of the problem because I only do reactions myself. But you know, and this could be just based off of like there's not an audience for it. But you know, the, the, I remember a time where there were so many different fun One Piece videos that were made of different topics and different uh, you know certain certain way, ways that things were filmed, and it was just it seemed like there was a lot more. I don't know. I don't want to say creativity. Cre- cre- yeah. You know, but I think I think creativity is the right. Uh, and and like it. I said, I don't. There could be out there. I just haven't seen it. Um, and uh, that, I guess that'll be my only issue. Uh, that you know, it, it used to be like funny news video, uh, news uh, videos people made, and, and comedy videos and things like that. Okay. Not quite the same anymore. But I understand yeah. that's not. There's not as much. It's a lot of work for probably less views than someone who makes a theory, for example. Yeah, definitely. You know, I think uh, yeah. I think we're in a new age of the community where One Piece is probably at the peak in the West at the moment. Yeah. And it's, uh, it's kind of I've seen I've seen like I remember when uh, Joy Boy and like Teking had you know ten thousand subs and then they just blew up overnight. Yeah. People are like people want to theorize. They want to they want to read the series. They want to get into it. I f- we yeah, we made this channel to be like 
give the other side of the story where it's like just relax a little bit and take more of a a step back and look at how people write things and how people draw things and yeah. look at the themes and theories and uh characters rather than just like who's stronger than who and you know the power scales and the you know people punching the world and stuff so oh, is that a shot of toriko so hey, man i love toriko <laughs> No, I mean, I like um, yeah. I remember, so, yeah. I remember when Tekken was like the Bleach guy. So it's kind of weird now that he's just like the big one. He's the One Piece guy. Because I told him at one point, I'm like, like we had him in like a GLC before he started making One Piece videos, or not before, but like you know he didn't make him as many at that point. I'm like, man, you should really make One Piece videos. You know, you're just like incredibly smart with One Piece. And like, oh, he's interesting. And you know now he's making all these One Piece videos. I'm like, I knew it. This guy's just he knows his stuff. So I'm happy for him. Um, so, yeah. But yeah, when I was in the community, uh, when I started out a long time ago, since 2013, old school. Uh, oof, Jeez. oof, I'm an old man. But yeah, 2013, you know, something like that. Yeah, One Piece was, believe it or not, the least popular of the big three. It was the the videos that don't get you views. Definitely, uh, yeah. It was it was by far the least interested uh, of the in, the in this community. I mean, obviously in Japan, it's always been popular, um, but. Yeah, so it's great to see that this, uh, at the very least, One Piece has elevated to the point where I think it deserves like all the credit it gets. So okay, um, I think we're gonna wrap it up soon. What 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 do you wanna what do you wanna see? What what's your what's the thing that is about One Piece that keeps you coming back and thinking about it and staying here for how many years you've been in 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 the in the story? What could you could you put it down to one one thing one emotion one one point as you'd say what do you think, do you think i don't know this? if it's just one point um if i had to choose just one point i would probably say the the wonder of the world it's, yeah. it's the world and the, the 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 people or the characters that inhabit that world and the 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 constantly evolving landscapes and political implications and different factions and the, the the governments and it just it just has such a uh an, a life to it um yeah. an ever shifting life that you never know what to expect um and like i said before the strats are great but what really interested me about one piece is just seeing how the world evolves how it shifts how it changes the events that occur um it's just a very vibrant well thought out well executed world with awesome characters uh very creative oda just knows how to i mean every arc that we get is just something out of like his insane imagination i mean from zo definitely on an island on a on a moving elephants you know uh yeah dress rosa you know being obviously based off of like spain and things like that and all the the, the toys that are members of society and things of things of that nature and obviously what we've gotten recently with whole cake island with all this trippy alice in wonderland stuff yeah i have problems with the art but just the creativity the, that he has and the amount of characters and quick crazy devil f- and, abilities his creativity is just unmatched for me um and f- yeah, from a from a guy from japan we're only going into the japanese arc now like 900 chapters deep it's yeah massive restraint for not doing it so early you know the, it's- there's no one in this world that loves one piece more than oda does I yeah, guarantee. definitely. I guarantee it. All right, man. I think that's gonna. You know, I don't want to keep you here all night. You know, it's pretty late for you. <laughs> hey, man, I'll be happy. I don't care. <laughs> but, yeah. Okay. Um, so, yeah, we appreciate you coming out, man, for the, for the show. Uh, we co- we're kind of aiming to get a guest on every month, and we got a few. I really thank you so much for the invite. It's always fun to talk to you guys and uh, talk one piece in general. So, yeah, thanks, thanks um, a lot. Man. Appreciate it. So yeah, hopefully we'll uh we'll do this again at some point. I hope so. I really do. Definitely, man. Thanks, man. Thanks for having me. Now, Christian, the favorite segment, Mm -hmm. the question corner. Indeed. First question. Hit from MBZ five. What is that? MBZ. Where would you like, if at all, to live in the One Piece world? Now, I'm going to eliminate the part, if at all, just for the question says. Yes. Where would you like to live in the One Piece world? We'd... I don't know. As ourselves? As plebs? 
Well, here's the thing. If you're in the One Piece universe, you have, you the, have the potential for the growth. One Piece potential. All right? All right. I don't want to hear this. You're just a normal cob. Yeah. You're human level. You can't yeah. do shit. Yeah. All right? If you're in the One Piece universe, you have One Piece traits. Where would I want to live? Where would you want to live? Now. Does anyone live anywhere in the One Piece world? They're on ships. Now, my answer is Luffy's village, so I could befriend the man and join the crew. Befriend Monkey Shanks? D. Even Shanks. Shanks. Childhood friends with Monkey D. We go on adventures. Well, I'm the, se- I'm the second. Okay, hand. well, the timeline, you know. Hey, man, I'm 22. I could be on the crew. It's possible. <laughs> I'm not that old. Uh, that's true. Future of Village or whatever it's called. That's my answer. And you know, maybe we'll slap Mark and her. Fun times. I'm thinking you do, probably don't want to be in the new world. Yeah, you know, you don't want to get fucked up. Oh, you probably don't want to be in the new world. Yeah. Because you need to train. But. Yes. Possible interactions with emperors. I mean. And who's an emperor? Mm-hmm. Shanks. Shanks. So my answer is one of the Shanks territories. You know that territory is not getting attacked. Oh, Bartolomeo would disagree. Well, Bartolomeo is some sort of clown. Yes. So, you know, my answer is Shanks. All right. One of Shanks' territories. Because Shanks is the god king. Okay. And I'll be under his protection. And I'll befriend the man Shanks. And join his crew. And join the crew. All right. All right. From our man Henry Russell... Don't you jail versus Rob Lucci CP0. He specifically pointy don't in jail. Pointy? Yes. Old, but it has a pointed head. In between where his head was pointy and not bent. In the dress rosa colossus. Yes. Do I think the Rakugan can smack that head back in? You're talking got the fist here. But at L4. Pushed it out, didn't push it in. Different actions. So I was able to bend it? Yeah, with the dual dragon nail. Which could shatter continent. a continent of ice. Or a sheet of ice. But a Luffy, large amount of here's ice. The thing. Luffy never fought Chin Jiao with his pointy head. Yeah. That's the problem I'm dealing with. But Lao Ji was able to get the jump. Don't you dare have a fight with him. Now, is Rob Luigi CP0 faster than Lao G? Yeah. I mean, you don't have to necessarily go up against the Jewel Dragon Nail. You can go around it. You can go around it, you can, you can do whatever you now, want. Now, that Jewel Dragon Nail is nasty. It's nasty, no doubt. Just don't go right for the head. Here's well, we don't know fucking anything about Rob Luigi CP0. Rob Luigi CP0, but we have Power Scale then. Yeah. Alright. So I'm going to say... Here's the thing. Don't you jail old man. Luffy kind of dominates him. Yeah. Alright, a little bit of clash here and there. But Luffy really gets the hit in. No gear four, no... no just nothing. a gear three hit. Yeah. Really. Just a big gear three hit. I think Rob, I think Rob Lush is above gear three Luffy. Yeah. So, we know he has Haki. I'm going to give it to uh, Rob Lush. Of course. Of course. Christian would give it to Rob Lush. But, uh, there it is. Next question. From AK Shit Arior. Alright. Aurora. If Shanks took Luffy as an apprentice at the start of the series mm-hmm. when he got his devil fruit. Yes. What's the quote? The series with devil fruit like Shanks was in the movie. What if? So what if Luffy was Shanks' apprentice? Yeah. We'd see the adventures of Shanks on Luffy's... On, we'd see the adventure of Luffy on Shanks' crew. Would Luffy only be Power King? Because he would get that Shanks... I training. feel like he'd be... He would get that Shanks... Indebted to Shanks... Instead of the Ace Zabo training... Yeah. He would get the Shanks training. But he'd probably turn out like Ace indebted to Whitebeard. But... And not wanting to be his own king. How though. much stronger would he be... Getting that Shanks training. I feel like at this point, Luffy would be the second hand man to Shanks. That's crazy. Just because of the relationship and shit. 
So we would see him on the adventures with Shanks. He'd get the training. He'd get the training. That Shanks and Ben Beckman training is manual. It's like oh. having Rayleigh around all the time. Exactly. Teaching him hockey from birth. How and much stronger did Luffy get? How much stronger did Luffy get? Luffy would have hockey at like 10. Exactly. Think about that. It's crazy. Think about that one. So, what if Luffy was Shanks' apprentice? Luffy would be way stronger. Maybe would he have his own? Would he have like his little little crew? He wouldn't have the crew. There wouldn't be no crew. There wouldn't be a crew, but we would have Shanks' crew. Yeah, which is Ben Beckman, Lucky Brew. Which I'm not gonna say he's better, but who knows? Interesting. Would I like to see that alternate story? Yes, but uh, that's that question. All right. For a man, return the slab. Yes. If you could choose one new logia to be in the story, which one? What'd you choose? What do we got? Fire, lightning, ice, magma. Yep. Snow. Snow. Mud. Mud. Or swamp. Swamp, whatever. What are we missing? Wind? Water. Water's not happening. Uh, Logia. Element. We have light. Yep. We have dark. Yep. So it's really interesting devil fruit. Logia. I don't know, like fucking atoms. I don't know. What is that? Atomic energy. I don't know. Atomic energy. All right. Well, what's my answer? Some sort of T two thousand type of devil fruit. Like like liquid liquid metal. metal. Okay. Pretty fucking cool. Interesting. What if it turns out that Luvius Fridge is a logo all along? I didn't know Special Paramecia? Yeah. Yeah, probably. Okay. Alright, that's that uh, question. From Most Monday. of the big ones are already taken, so. Yeah, that's the problem. Except Wind, which is Dragon, obviously. Uh, from Monkey D. Sparrow. Yes. Ace was worried about Luffy's life, so why didn't he take Luffy's Vivi card? He gave his. He gave it. He gave his to Luffy instead. Luffy didn't have a Vivi card at this point. Yeah, they. We don't really know how Vivi cards are made, kind of. Yeah, they're just kind of made. They're just like of the fingernails of the people. Uh, yeah, weird. It's weird how they make them. Um, cause Ace is the big brother, right? Yeah. So he's like. Wait, yeah, that's a good point. It, it, if you, yeah. it's like if you ever need me, come find me. Yeah. Because Luffy doesn't have one. Okay. I guess that's the that's the answer. Luffy doesn't have one to give. That's probably the answer. And the events of Marineford had to happen. Yep. From Gania. Is there more treasure next to the straw hat in the same room? And each of them represent a person of the past. If they are all straw hat crew related, what would the reaction of this... Do? To the public. What would the reaction be to the community? Bedlam. I want to like it, man. Three swords, slingshot. A sword, a slingshot. Climb attack. Fuck it. There's seven. There's like ten Cola. straw hats. There's ten straw hats. What so, does that even mean? No, no, weird. If, are there other relics? I think they are. Yeah. Are they straw hat related? No. Okay. They, it's too unbelievable. Are they supernova related? Well, is there a cigar there and like a law hat and shit? Uh, let's not get into that, alright? Yeah. Let's not get into that. From Dr. Sim Adu- Aduku? Aduku. Okay. Question. Would you be disappointed if the straw hat is something about the lions? Something, something about a prophecy? Yes. Yes. I would be very disappointed with that. I'd be disappointed yes. if it... He's like, is, Luffy's a chosen one. That's, that's the most like, disappointing. Here's the thing. Oda's a creative man. And that is the most uncreative answer. Yes. I wouldn't like it for many reasons. Because then the story's just about destiny. And, you know, it doesn't matter. Destiny's kind of boring. Destiny's a boring concept. Yeah. You know, predeterminism is a boring concept. Mm-hmm. I don't like it. Personally, I like that thought. I like that the Red Luffy is similar to Roger, etc. He's still doing... He's still doing things at his own decisions, and we can expect him to react a different conclusion than Roger. Yes. Yeah. I think 
he's it's kind of a, a transference of will. Yeah. It's not destiny. He has the personality, let's say, of the aging guy. Yeah. But he's not the aging guy, and it's not a pre predetermined outcome. Okay. Because maybe Roger failed. Yeah. And he was the reincarnation, but he failed. Okay. So. Is Luffy the second Maybe, child's did, destiny? I did Roger not. not have enough time to change the world? That's why he started the One Piece. I think that might be that might be the case. Yeah. So he wanted he wanted the guy who had the uh, the strength the will to find his treasure to to inherit his will and then change the and world, do whatever he wants with whatever he finds. Yeah. All right, from OG Perps. Yeah. Question for next week. How strong do you guys think Kuma is and would he be stronger without Dr. Vegapunk's brain hack? His double fruit really has the potential to be the best besides Law's Room. And a two-part question, if, if possible. Yes, it is. Which double fruit would you guys like to have within the story? Now, now um, a double fruit we haven't been introduced to. Thanks, guys. Keep it up. First question, Kuma. I don't like the argument that Kuma is being quote unquote nerfed, because we don't technology know. couldn't make him more analytical. We don't know what Vegapunk actually did. Yes. All we know is that he he says he's losing his mind. That doesn't necessarily mean he's weaker. Now Kuma's strength, the devil fruit's overpowered. Specifically, sending people flying, and his body's kind of broken. Yeah. Yeah. The reflection fruit. I'd say around Mingo. Yeah, yeah. Mingo level. I think it's around Mingo level. I just, you just fair. gotta dodge those hands at all costs. Yeah. yeah. The poor, poor fruit. He's fast as fuck. Yeah. He, he can move those things around pretty fast. Mm-hmm. He can Maybe he can pull all the pain out of his body and redirect it into you. Which is crazy. Which is fucking crazy. Yeah. Kuma, very deadly. Uh, can Vegapunk make a competent AI? Probably. Probably. Um, Vegapunk's the best you can't scientist s- in the world, so... You can't say that he's nerfed. I think that he's at the same level, if not stronger. Yeah. Because we haven't really had a fight with Kuma, like an all-out fight with Kuma to begin with. Nerf of thought, maybe. He, like... Does things that he does. He saves Luffy. He kind of comprehends know. like, like you the classic story beat where like, a uh, a machine falls, folly to, some kind of human ne- mechanism that he doesn't. Well, Kuma Kuma is kind of a rogue agent that he helps Luffy. He protected the Sunny. Yeah, he's kind of like that guy. If he loses his mind, he's gonna lose that kindness. So maybe he's more ruthless, making him stronger. Yeah. So, he could be strong. There's multiple ways to think about it. Not necessarily that he was nerfed. Now, what double fruit would you like? This is kind of a meme within our friendship group. Because Eric has a stupid answer. Yeah, the, the, my answer is always the human-human fruit. Yeah. So I can grow to enormous sizes. And Now, Chopper's, Chopper's awakening should be a, a fully built man with a little reindeer nose. Yeah. He has the human-human fruit, not the... Anthropomorphic reindeer humanoid okay. fruit. Okay. So Rob Lucci can turn into a leopard. Why can't Chopper turn into a man? It's a straight man. Yeah. Who knows? That's a question. Uh, my answer is always the light fruit because it's the most broken. Okay. Does he want us to also make one up? I mean, we just did that, right? I mean, we just made up a Logia. Well, oh. get quickly. What fruit would you want that's not that doesn't exist? Doesn't exist. What do you want? What do you want to be? Basically, it's like what superpower that do you want that doesn't exist in One Piece? Give me the ability to. I don't know. Well, what do I want? I want the ability to duplicate things. So I can duplicate a bar of gold and have infinite money. That might exist in fill up, but. Who knows? Duplicating uh, things? Yeah. Okay. Might exist in Thor. Um, in the One Piece world, it doesn't really work, but in this reality, sure. I don't know what I, I, don't know what I want. Just say time. The ability to stop time. 
There you go. Yeah, I don't know. All right, uh, is that all the questions? Is it? Is it? Yep, that's all the questions this week. Christian, what a what a week it's been for the community. Crazy, crazy week yeah. indeed. Crazy week indeed. Now, what do you want to say to the people, Christian? What are we talking about? What are we keep doing? your head screwed on? Yeah, I don't want to hear about crazy theories without asking yourself the crucial questions first. Mm-hmm. The reverie was good. Good reverie, good discussions. I like to see it. Yep. You know? Um, uh, you know, we're going into the Ravery arc fully now. That's good. Do you want to apologize to the people about your misinformation last week about Fujitora? There was no misinformation okay. to be had. You threw me under the bus. Yeah. There's going to be good discussions happening in the comment section. Mm-hmm. Comment down below. We'll be in there. Uh, Mr. White Bear throwing around that, uh, Fujitora 100% confirmed. Outside of the Navy, and is just a random guy off the street. Yeah. You can't say that, it's an assumption. He does say he's a newcomer to the Marines, but he could be part of another division of the world government. Okay. You don't know. Does it make sense that the uh, world government just hire random people to be animals and lead their uh, armies? Does that make sense? No. Okay. So that's my, that's my can of that. There you go. I said that last week. Mm-hmm. No misinformation. To be uh, shown. Oh. Uh, Christian, you can rate the video. You can rate the video. You can subscribe to the channel. 300 subscribers. That's, uh, that's some sort of feat, that's, right? That's something. That's some sort of feat. It's something. We're losing light in this room. Yeah, it's getting as dark. The, as the sun goes down. Uh, Mid afternoon recording. What's happening, Christian? I don't know. Uh, I'm about to finish uni, yeah. so I have more time to give you the content. Okay. Uh, what does that mean? More research, more juicy topics, mm-hmm. uh, not necessarily more shows. I think we'll keep it to one show a week. We tried a little little pulling out of the, the video. Try to uh, I don't know. This is the thing. Does the, we're trying we're trying to grow the channel, so we're we're gonna be trying a few different things, throwing it out there. Does it work? Uh, we hope so. Uh, I have an idea for um, for a compilation of the power scale. I think people would enjoy that. I don't know if it could technically be done. Eric doesn't want to do the work. There might be technical issues with that. But say My say if you want that, if you want that, we'll make it. Uh, but we will make it. I mean, Eric will make it. Let me yes. Let me know. Uh, we, you know, we I could stream an hour a night just to talk to the people live. Might happen. There's no chance you can stream. I mean, maybe. just audio over. Yeah, just audio. Just have just have hangouts. Just have hangouts with the people. Have well, yeah. Okay. Yeah, you could. I don't know. Maybe. I'll figure it out. Let me know if you want some kind of live streaming aspect. Technical issues may arise heavily. A lot of technical issues. Internet fucking sucks in Australia, especially in our area. region or area where we don't, we don't have the new network yet. So yeah. once we get that, maybe there might be a possibility of streaming. Okay, but still doubtful. You know, you know third world internet. Christian, you can find me on Twitter at Eric Tolado on Twitter. Yeah. All right. Hot takes on My Hero. Uh, Eric has his agenda <laughs> against My Hero Academia. And I keep on saying, you want to have an opinion, people, go read the People show. in the comments section saying all the things you're talking about happen later on. Now, go read my it. candidate that is, I'm 60 chapters deep. You, you hooked me earlier, but you know what? I might put in the effort put in to the, read you want to You want to criticise something, read the whole thing. Okay. And keep up to date. Otherwise, I don't want to hear it. Alright. You can uh, find the episode on SoundCloud, on iTunes. Rate, subscribe, follow, all that shit. Well, well, the welcome to new people do. from uh, Zoro's fan base. Yes, hello. We have multiple videos that are really fucking long. This one's going to be long. Yep. So, I hope you enjoy it. Shanks is the Goat King. You not.
What are you doing? I'm tying it up. Fucking Lucy Goose. Lucy Goosey.